Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear chess friends. Welcome to round six of, of Abu Dhabi Chess Festival 2018. And today is round six. We start with master tournament at five o'clock and open tournament. Very interesting event. Uh, open tournament which start at six o'clock. I want to speak a little bit about open tournament. It's a tournament with 200 participants and we have two leaders with perfect score Al Saleh Mohammed and Samah Datar. They will play each other and today is a decisive day for the leader of the tournament. Uh, also I would like to mention Abu Dhabi uh, Chess and Culture Club player Ahmed Al Remethe. He is one of the leaders of the tournament with uh, four points from six games. He plays on board number one with Labi Chian from Iran. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, Indian players, Filipino players, and also title players. We have here candidates master, FIDE masters. Yeah, you can see already on your screen uh, masters tournament. Our champions, our grandmasters. Levon Pansulaya, this is Anton Korobov, uh, play, is playing on the first board with Van Hao. So in Master Tournament we have five players with four and a half out of five, five leaders. There is no sole leader. So Korobov plays with Van Hao, on board number two Pansulaya with uh, Daniel Dubov. You can see uh, both Grandmasters are trying to concentrate, are trying to remember the, the, the preparation, the, the morning preparation. Yeah, this is the list, this is the pairing. You can follow the results on, on, on chessresults.com. Uh, you can also download the games and also see the games online, follow us. You can see the games on Chess24. We have, we have a lot of uh, pictures and videos on uh, our Facebook page, AD Chess Festival. Also, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, AD Chess Festival, and our, on our Instagram page. So this is one, just one more time, I want to remind you, this is the biggest event in Asia, biggest open event in Asia, with mo more than 500 participants and $79,000 prize fund. And the winner of Master Tournament, Master Group, will take home will take back home $13,000. There is also a lot of special prizes for the best female player, best junior players in all sections, master, open and juniors, for local players, for uh, club players, for juniors, under ages group, and also a lot of gifts. You can see on your screen uh, my colleague, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Komarov Dmitry from Ukraine. Currently, he is the coach of uh, Alain Chess Club. Yeah, here is my colleague concentrating, concentration, speaking with someone. And uh, yeah, here he trained uh, Alain Chess players. And on board number three, I would like to mention one more uh, interesting game. Uh, Kravtsev Martin plays with Salem. Salem, he's four and a half out of five. Yesterday he really won a nice game, a fantastic positional game. Yeah, this is Rapport family. Richard Rapport with his wife. She's also grandmaster uh, from Ser Serbia. All right, so yesterday we had uh, one more surprise result. Niger short or lost to uh, Levan Pantsulaya. Well, actually, hard, hardly I can say this is, a, this is a surprise. So one Grandmaster beat the other one. Yeah, Grandmaster Salem play with black, plays with Black Pisa against uh, Martin Kravtsy from Ukraine. From Ukraine. Um, and Daniela Vocatura plays with Richard Robert on board number four. And one more heavy Heavyweight Grandmaster's game is board number five. Fedor Save Vladimir plays with Sarkisian Gabriel. Gabriel is currently, I mean, from this year, he's currently coach in Sharjah Chess Club. Uh, once again, 
to, uh, this is round six. We have four more rounds, decisive rounds. Uh, this is international master and board number two of Olympic team, no Omar Noman from United Arab Emirates. Soon he will represent uh, Emirates at the at the Batumi Chess World Olympiad. Uh, the last meeting of the arbiters, smiling, uh, making some jokes. This is Tigran Petrosan and his Jack Daniels shirt. He's uh, probably one of the best blitz player in the world. But in classical, he's okay. He's doing quite well. He's doing quite well. From other games, I would like to mention uh, Le Quang Glen with Fier. So, uh, Le Quang Glen now he's back with three and a half out of five, playing with Brazilian Grandmaster uh, Amin Basem. He lost yesterday, but still he is in a fighting mood. Uh, in the open tournament, actually, you can you can lose one game on or even two. Still, you can win the tournament. Still, you can come first. This is the big advantage of the of the open tournament. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we have two more tournaments to start. Two more tournaments. We have a family tournament. So starting tomorrow, two days. So if you are a family, if you are a chess fan and you want to participate in, in this event, so please register today and tomorrow you can participate from 2 p.m. local time, today, tomorrow and after tomorrow. So you are really welcome to, uh, to participate in this tournament. And also we have a Homeland Protectors tournament and senior tournament for senior players. Nigel Short, yeah, this is a lot of grandmasters. So we have a 15 minutes delay. This is top board, board number one, Anton Korobov. Always concentrated, always ready for a big fight. Actually, probably he's one of the biggest fighter in the world. No draws, really, he plays for a, for a win even with the black pieces. With the player pieces. So Ukraine against China, two big chess countries. So probably nowadays uh, there is, let's say, five, six nations with chess nations in the world. So here is, of course, traditionally Russia, uh, China, Ukraine, India, and United States. And also I would mention uh, Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan. You can see here my student, Ahmed al Remethi, one of the leaders of, of Open Tournament. Hi, Ahmed. So I wish you good luck, and really for you it's a decisive game. So the, the Open Tournament starts with uh, one, uh, after one hour at 6 o'clock, here in the same venue in uh, Dusitani Five Stars Hotel here in Abu Dhabi downtown. All right, so a little bit of statistics, a little bit of statistics. Uh, 52 grandmasters and the tournament started. Round six, D4. No surprise, Anton is a D4 player. Actually, time to time he plays C4, but uh, mostly the, 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 this tra is transposing to, to his favorite move, D4. And also, no surprise for Pansulaya. Levan Pansulaya plays, plays knight f3, g3, c4 stuff, trying d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6. All right, queen's gambit or not? Wow, first surprise of the round. Grandmaster Kraftsiv plays London system. Actually, First time I see play, uh, him playing this system, usually he's an E4 player with a very uh, deep knowledge, with a very deep theoretical knowledge. Knight C3, okay, this is a really fashionable line. And um, D5, yeah, this is the D5 or D6, or Bishop G7, there is two choice here. Once again, London system, wow. A lot of London system today's, today. So we have a London system, board number one on board number three. But this time, uh, 
Van Hau choose the symmetrical system with bishop f4, bishop f5, e3. Probably will black. Yeah, this is board number three. London system. So now h4 is the move. H4. White should play very aggressively. Otherwise, otherwise it's really hard to um, it's really hard to materialize the knight on c3. Because from positional point of view, the knight on c3 is not a good piece. So you should start to play you should play start to play h4 using the hook g6 and sometimes white sacrifice the exchange. Back to board number one. Symmetrical London system, okay, e3, e6, here the move is c4, allowing bishop takes b1. One of the most famous game is the game of world champion Magnus Carlsen beating Wesley So from United States. And this year, Wake on the Super GM tournament. Okay, there is also a choice here to play or knight d2 or bishop d3 if you want to, to play a, quid, a quiet game. It depends of Anton's mood here, or of him, of his deep preparation. So it de now, if he plays c4, then he is ready for a big fight. If he plays knight d2 or bishop d3, so then he will try to to uh, to, to play to continue the game without any big risk, uh, without any big risk. So here is the moment to take a decision, or c4 aggressively, or knight d2, or bishop d3. All right, so all the players are mm, on board number three, back to board number three, London system with h4. As I said, yes, for me it's not hard to guess the moves. So h4 is very fashionable nowadays, and it's aggressive, aggressive line. There is a lot of moves here. There is a move h5, which prefer the the, the French superstar Maxime Vachille Graf. Uh, Black can play also uh, castle uh, castle allowing h5. Yeah, we are back now on board number two. Yeah, this is usual usual Levan Pansulaya's play. Double fianchetto, fianchetto the the bishop on g2 and on b2. No surprises, so this is, he played a lot of, I would say, hundreds, hundreds or maybe thousands games with this uh, system, especially in, in his rapid and blitz games. So, um, yeah, this he will develop the bishop to g2, the other to b2, make castle, play c4, e3. Uh, all the moves are really uh, easy to guess. So, no immediately fight for an advantage, you just let the, the game to be decided in the middle game or sometimes in a very deep end game. A quiet game. It will be, I, I expect here to be a quiet big game, but a long, a long one. All right. All right. Probably this is a good uh, opening choice against a very well-prepared Daniel Dubov from Russia, a very well-known theoretician. So it's a correct, it's a good uh, opening choice in my opinion. And here we'll have a long game. Uh, what else we have of today's round? Yeah, do not forget we have also a junior tournament in the morning, in the morning, and they already complete, completed uh, seven rounds, seven rounds, with all over the world strong juniors are participating. This is board number. We, uh, this it was the board number five with Fedor Seif playing Sarkisian. Yeah, thank you, thank you for uh, uh, this. If I'm not mistaken, from this, from the camera, I can predict this is a Scotch defense of. Uh, this is Scotch defense. Sorry. Yeah, Scotch defense. Uh, the bishop is developed on c5, knight takes c6, and here the move is queen f f6. So now black should touch the queen and put it on f6. Come on, Gabriel. Of course, you know this. He's the former, uh, he's the former coach of uh, World Cup winner, uh, uh, Armenian grandmaster... Um, uh, I forgot his name. Okay, the leader, the leader uh, of the of the Armenian team, the leader for Armenian team. All right. 
so mainly we'll focus on this uh, on these five games. Daniel Dubov. Daniel Dubov is uh, walking, shaking hands with uh, with Richard Rapport from Hungary. For Hungary, they know each other very well. They are from they are from same generation, same age, approximately, and they know each other from uh, for, from their childhood, play, competing in the world and European uh, championships. Back to make a decision. Bishop b2 or bishop g2. This is the ch bishop to b2, c5, and the other bishop will come to g2. And the other bishop will come to g2. All right. All right. Here, really uh, not hard to guess. Yeah, bishop to g2, as, as it was expected. Um, Bishop g2, now bishop to g7, also no big surprises, no big surprises, it's easy. So we have 15 minutes delay, so our viewers of on uh, chess 24 or chess bomb can follow us with 15 minutes, or with uh, 15 minutes delay. Um, All right. So for the prize fund, uh, the the winner, uh, uh, I mean, the, the 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 sharing system, the the prize sharing system is the Hort system. Uh, probably uh, for the first time, uh, Abu Dhabi Chess Club use Abu Dhabi Chess Festival organizers are using this method. Uh, before it was like uh, a, a direct, I mean, a direct place. Uh, Prize and this time, except the first one, except the winner, the other prize will be tied according to Hort system. Um, what do we have? Yeah, board number six is also interesting game. Narayanan, a grandmaster from India, plays with Vladimir Akopian. Vladimir Fedosev, one more Vladimir, the other Vladimir from Russia, plays with Gabriel Sarkisian. So a very uh, original player we can expect really any opening really any opening uh, from i don't know like it's hard to predict and here here gabriel is still think is still thinking actually i don't know maybe white can play black can play directly b takes c6 but as i know the queen f6 is the main move and I don't know if really there is a big choice. Okay, b takes c6, because taking by, with the other pawn leaves white after queen takes d8 a clear advantage in the end game. Now, b takes c6 immediately. Okay. Okay, this is the preparation. This is the preparation. The move is quite, I mean, it's a rare move. It's a really rare move. It's a really rare move comparing to the move queen f6. Okay, so white usually should play here, bishop to d3, castle short, and preparing the advance of the f pawn. King h1, f4. And sometimes white also plays the bishop to g5. The bishop to g5. Uh, yeah, bishop to d3, correct. This is to d3. And after d6 or knight f6, why, I also, ah, actually, there is a, a very interesting move here for black, queen h4. Looks like a beginner's move, like to develop the queen, to develop the queen first. But in fact, the move is, is a possible one. After b queen h4, castle, knight goes to f6. And the queen on, on h4, no, d6. This is this, d6, this is the mo more quiet. I'm more quiet. And after castle, black prepared to knight c3 first. Okay, this is actually very interesting. Delaying the castle. So now sometimes white can play knight to a4, changing the bishop for the knight. And who knows? Maybe white's intention is to castle long and to play for a kingside attack. Yeah, this move is more flexible. Let's go back to board number one. 
Board number one, no. So uh, somehow, actually, I felt that that uh, Anton is a not in a very aggressive move, not in a very m aggressive move, and he played the most. I mean, the quiet continuation instead of c4, knight to d2, and bishop d6, knight e5. Okay, the 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 system is not without uh, a venom, but I don't I don't think uh, I don't think White can achieve. Uh, an advantage, an opening advantage after such a such a um, quiet, uh, such a quiet, uh, let's say, a play. So okay, knight e5 shows some aggressive intentions. So uh, maybe white can play g4. Or maybe white can play g4. Let's say after castle, I'm almost hundred percent sure that g4 will come. G4 will come, creating uh, strong threats on the king side. So black should delay castle by playing here, or knight d7, or even knight e4, trying to copy, trying to copy white's moves. Yeah. So or knight d7 or knight e4. Uh, this is my advice. So ca to castle is g4 and. Uh, white really uh, gets some good attack attacking chances. Of course, Van Hau knows, knows all these subtleties, and I don't believe knight e5, knight d2, and knight e5 is a surprising, uh, surprising line against his system. Let's go to board number four. Board number four, Daniele Vocaturo from Italy plays with Richard Rapport from Hungary. From Hungary, it's a Nimtso, Nimtso with knight f3 and g3. Knight f3 and g3, avoiding, avoiding the main lines, and and uh, and Richard Rapport adopts the same system that he, uh, the same system he played with Dinara. Sadwakasova in round two. Uh, in round two, he won a nice game, a really nice game. And why not? Yeah, why to change the opening, which brings you points? Of course, you should. You should. You can repeat it. You should repeat it. But there is a very big risk that your opponent is more prepared, will come more prepared to this game, and some novelties or some improvements are possible. Richard Robert looks uh, very confident in his uh, opening choice and his uh, openings and in his home preparation and analyzing. So let we will see here a theoretical battle. And Daniel Avocatura, I know him actually. I know this player from a uh, I don't know, from a really when he was a a teenager when he was maybe 14. Uh, he was a very promising kid, uh, very talented with uh, good calculations. Nowadays, he's a grandmaster with 2-6, uh, 16. And he plays everything. So e4, d4, a very uh, dynamic and a very aggressive player. He always rejects a draw. He never plays for a draw. Even in the, mo in the, in the even in the, in the, in the most difficult situation, tournament situation, he always for a win. It's very, I mean, it's very interesting to to follow this player. Okay, so um, Grandmaster Salem, uh, this is board number three. Board number three. Thank you, thank you for um, for our camera. Yes, so uh, Grandmaster Salem. As I said, trust in Vashir Lagraf's uh, moves. He played h5, so after h4, h5. Uh, yeah, this line was, I mean, is playing, uh, is playing uh, quite often, I would say, in, in, in every Super GM tournament uh, with h5 and brings to French superstar uh, very good results all right so h5 knight f3 and actually uh, it's a little bit different because as i know um as i know uh, vashila graf plays the bishop to g4 and always after bishop it takes this knight on e f3 
and trying to play with the pawn chain against bishop's pair. Uh, Salem uh, choose a little bit different um, different setup. So he just played c5 and knight c6, followed by short castle. And here white is to decide what to do, or to grow uh, aggressively castle long, or maybe to play bishop e2 and castle short. Yeah, a, cu a cup of coffee, of course, help you to, to make a decision. It's uh, it is already 100% approved uh, method using by chess players. So Kravtsev took his decision, yeah? To think more, yeah, this is probably his decision. All right, so castle long. If you want to really to, to take an advantage, to fight for, a, for an advantage, you have to castle long. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, really no big chances. Go, let's go to board number two. Board number one, sorry, board number one. Yeah, as I said, board number two, probably can, we can uh, go to some middle game because nothing interesting. Same London system, but this time symmetrical one. After bishop f4, black adopted the, the, the system with bishop f5, and a knight e5 played knight d7. Actually, as I predicted, as I predicted, the move castle would be uh, would give white a, a good attacking chances after g4, and after knight d7, uh, actually now g4 is impossible. Actually, to many reasons. Maybe probably bishop takes knight on e5. All right. So, uh, Levan, Levan on Levan Pantsolai on board number two, board number two. A double fianchetto. Uh, he almost in every white game he plays this uh, this line. So here, white to decide or to play e3 or to play c4 immediately. Yes, c4, c4. He is the Benoni player. Probably uh, nowadays, nowadays one of the very few grandmasters in the world who are still playing Benoni. Uh, before it was uh, one of the greatest Benoni players, it was Vugar Gashimov from Azerbaijan. But he unfortunately passed away in a very young age of 27 years only. And nowadays uh, Pantsulaya plays, he's the only player who plays uh, Benoni with both colors. So with white too, adopting uh, uh, this system. So, after, so if black plays now d4, White will play e3, and after exchanging on d4, playing d3, there will be Benoni structure position. So Daniel Dubov, uh, okay, if you want to, to real to go for a big fight, you have to play d4. You have to play d4. If you want to, to yes, d4, of course, of course. You shouldn't ask Daniel twice. You shouldn't ask Daniel twice. He likes sharp positions. He, he likes to play a, something principal. He never avoid a big fight. So after the move e3, black will castle, and e takes d4, c takes d4, d3, and the famous Benoni structure will arise. All right, so Pantsola played a lot of games, really a lot of games thousands of games with both colors. And he is the, one of the biggest specialists in the world of this system. Uh, what do we have? Yeah, we are back on board number one. Board number one, no. Okay, so Korobov is not in aggressive mood. And it's really pity. Actually, Bishop D3 shows that really his, his, his intention is to make a draw. May, I hope I'm wrong. Really, I hope I'm wrong. But I, I mean, uh, if, you like, if you exchange the, the white square's bishop by playing Bishop D3, and you are ready to exchange the knights on E5, uh, really, you are not fighting for an opening advantage. So it will be a very quiet game, and the most probable, probable result will be a draw. Uh, 
Yeah, this is board number five. This is board number five. Fedosev, Sarkisian, Queen H4. Okay, today I'm, I'm really in a very good, in a very good form. I guessed his intention. Yeah, he wants to play Queen Queen H4, Knight F6 or Knight E7, Knight G6. Actually, now, uh, yeah, he's the he was the second of uh, of Levon Aronian, the leading the leading Armenian super grandmaster. And of course, he knows a lot of secrets for, from their uh, work, and and most of the novelties, most of, most of the ideas belongs to Gabriel. He is a very original uh, a chess player. So Queen goes to h4. After Queen e2, White Black can choose now, or to play Knight to e7 and Knight g6, or to play the more natural move Knight f6. Or there is also possible a provocative move, bishop g4. Bishop g4, and after that, actually white is forced to play queen d2. Oh, queen d2. Queen d2. Well, I don't know. Bishop g4 looks like an interesting move. An interesting move here. Bishop to g4, and the only move is queen d2. Of course, queen f1 is much worse. So queen d2 and then knight f6 or knight e7. Mm, I don't know. Okay, knight e7, knight g6 looks like it's absolutely normal. So knight f6, I'm thinking, can white play e5 immediately? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, my intuition, uh, knight f6, e5, bishop g4. And white lose a pawn. Knight f6, e5, bishop g4. No, knight of 6 maybe white will. White's intention is to play g3. And if queen h3, to develop the bishop to g2, to d2, sorry, or to e3 and castle long. Yeah, probably a Grandmaster Fedosev wants to castle long. And this is a good idea, at least. At least the game will be very sharp and very interesting after uh, op opponents will castle um, in a yeah knight f6 yeah the most natural move in the in the position so no it was no need to to invent something uh, like bishop g4 or knight e7 this is the most natural choice and I do expect here the move g3. G3 followed by by Bishop D2 and Castle Long. Uh, actually, this will be really a, a Fedosev style. No easy ways for him and for his opponent. So probably he's the player that you can say about him that he plays and allow other to play chess. So why not? Let's play just an interesting game and let's see who's who is stronger. He never goes for simplifications, never plays the long theoretical lines, never, let's say, ch is checking uh, your, your, his opponent's uh, home preparation and tries to create over the board. This is his credo, this is his uh, chess uh, belief. Okay. Um, we are back to board number one, and after Bishop D3, Van Grandmaster Van Hauer is thinking. So now, okay, the the, the simplest move is Bishop takes Bishop. Uh, bishop takes D3. I don't see any any big problems for Black. So Bishop Black, okay, if Bishop G6, well, gives White uh, Bishop spare advantage. Actually, nothing wrong with uh, with the move castle here, which allows bishop takes e5, bishop takes f5, e takes f5. This structure is also a very, uh, let's say, uh, very popular, and mostly, mostly this is coming from Queen's Gambit, from many system of Queen's Gambit, and and real this is playable, this is playable. Uh, all right, uh, this is playable. Uh, let's go to board number three. Board number three, Kravtsev with Salem. Yeah, 
Uh, here I would exp f3. Grandmaster crafts a play played the move f3. And the move is the as I know the the game is still theoretic th is still theoretical line, and this is the best move as far as I know. So white is playing like in a like in a dragon style and a Sicilian dragon. White wants to play g4, and later on if g pawn takes a pawn takes pawn h5 to sacrifice um, to sacrifice the pawn and to launch. A direct, a direct kingside attack. Okay, so we have the moves on our screen, on chest 24, and maybe I can show you a couple of variations. Uh, yeah, this is the current position, and also in my computer too. So after move f3, after move f3, after move f3, yeah, my computer is connected, and Thank you for receiving the moves. After move f3, black usually tries to advance the pawns on the queen's side. On the queen's side. So there is a big choice here of moves. Uh, first, black can play a queen move to b6, but it allows the move castle. Anyway, white wants to castle short. Uh, sorry, long. So no need, no need to push white. Uh, bishop f5, definitely, I don't believe this is a good move because it allows to play g4 with tempo. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe g bishop f5 here is possible move. Let's say bishop f5. Now I can move the, I can make the moves on my board. So after bishop f5, if castle long, maybe black can play knight b4. Attacking c2, bringing, or c takes d4 first. Yeah, this is the current position. Bishop f5, this is my, uh, this is my recommendation. And after castle long, c takes d4 first, e takes d4. I don't know if black really needs to take it immediately. Knight uh, b4, attacking c2 pawn. And now really the game is sharp. And white just can can ignore this threat and play g4. I don't know. Maybe I'm too optimistic, and probably I am. OK, let's try. Bishop takes c2 and rook e1. And rook e1. Or this is too much, yeah? This is a little bit too much. This is... A this is a little bit too much. All right, so um, instead of g4, there is another sacrifice play, to play a3. And if knight takes c2, oh yeah, I would like to show this a very funny variation. And if g4 now, black wins here with a funny move. So can you find this move now? So here, black to play and win. So please message me, text me on chess24, um, chess24. Or on our Twitter. Yeah, so a funny move here. The knight goes to the corner. Knight and I1 and no defense against knight b3. Winning the queen. This is the idea. This is the idea. All right. All right. Uh, this, is the, mm, this is the strong idea. So bishop f5 is a, is a possible move. Here is the view from, from the camera. Here is the view from the camera. Here is the view from the camera. And bishop f5 once again. Once again, this is the move that really I, I believe it's a good one. It's a good one. All right. And the other choice, OK, it's actually a natural move. I mean, I don't know if if. The, Maybe black can white can play knight takes to c6 b c6 and bishop e5. This moves guarantee at least changing the black square's bishop, and also maybe white wants to play bishop e2 and g4. I don't know. I don't know. And bishop from e5, yeah, 
No, but this is still possible idea. So bishop on f5, bishop on f5 once again. Of course, white can delay the castle by playing bishop e2 and waiting for the move knight before. And here, of course, white is not forced to castle. Yeah, this is the current position. And uh, and bishop f5, bishop f5 is, is the move. Bishop the, the f5 is the move that I would recommend here. Or, uh, or c takes d4 first and bishop f5. So one more time, one more time. Let's see. Yeah, and after, and yeah. So my idea was on on, on after f3, bishop f5. To play first bishop e2. And waiting for the move knight b4. And if knight b4, white can delay the castle. And by playing, let's say bishop to d1, the move looks maybe a little bit ugly. But in fact. In fact, the, I mean, white prepares the move b4, the, knight, the move, move g4. The knight on b4 is doing nothing, and, and really it's, um, I don't know, I would prefer white pieces here. Now white wants to take on c5 to play a3. So after bishop f5, white can play a very sharp move, castle, or maybe to delay it little, a little bit. To delay it, uh, it a little bit and to play bishop e2. Uh, what about, okay, it's always a bad idea to be greedy, but let's try. On After bishop f5, of course, I never recommend you to take on, on c5 because it gives uh, black strong initiative. Knight on e5 is hanging, and I don't know, I think there is a lot of good moves here for black. Like rook c8, maybe queen a5, and maybe, maybe I don't know, black can just move the knight from f6 to e8. No, definitely d takes c5 is not a move, is not a choice, and castle long, castle long is, mm. or, or bishop e2. And instead of bishop f5, okay. Uh, is there any other ideas here? Sometimes, sometimes black plays the move c4. I don't think this is the right moment to do it. Because after that, so it's, it's uh, this tension, it was in the blacks. Uh, it was actually the black man's idea to open the c file. And hoping for b5, b4, it's really not, a, not, an easy, not easy to achieve. And white is free now to start the king's side attack and maybe sometimes even to play e4. So I would say after long castle and on any black's move, like a6, I don't know, white can already play in the center by, by e4. I would prefer white. It's actually, it's actually, it's, it's the rules of chess. It's the rules of chess. Uh, when your opponent plays on the side, you, you should you should occupy the center. You should take the center and and play in the center. So no, uh, definitely definitely the the c4 is not the move. So bishop f5, bishop f5, bishop f5 is my recommendation. I I think that that Grandmaster Salem knows all these subtleties, and uh, he will produce. Uh, I mean the strongest move. Uh, let's see if there is some actions in board num on board number one. On board number one. On board number one. A quiet game. A quiet game. A quiet game and and I don't know. Honestly speaking, uh, I have nothing to comment here because, well, really uh, the game to me like soon will end to a draw because it's a, it's a, it's a quiet position and many many pieces can change and and no, this is not. Let's go to to more interesting game on board number two. Board number two. 
board number two, Levan Pansulaya plays with uh, plays with Dubov Daniel from Russia. Dubov Daniel from Russia. All right, let's go to um, board number three. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, the opening moves, and uh, we'll go now for a sh very short break. Stay with us, and soon we'll continue our live coverage from round six of Abu Dhabi Masters 2018.
And we have a lot of interesting games, especially I would like to mention the board number two and board number three. Uh, Crafts of Salem. It's a very um, interesting position from London system. Um, playing, um, I would say, not quite often from uh, Grandmaster Martin Kraftsev. Usually he's an E4 player, but not today, not this time. He's, um, he developed his... He played H5 and, and put the knight on E5, Queen D2, preparing long castle. And here, uh, here um, my recommendation before going to the break was to play Bishop F5. To play Bishop F5 and tries to play rook to c8, knight b4, create some counterplay against c2 pawn. And the other move c4, it will be a, a big positional blunder, I would say, because after castle long e4, white will exercise the initiative. All right, so bishop f5. Let's see from the camera. Let's see from the camera if Grandmaster Salem played or not bishop f5. Because we have a 15 minutes delay and really we are interested. We are very interested in board number three to say now this is board number two. This is board number two. Very interesting position. Okay, let's see. Board number two. Dubov Pansulaya. Dubov Pansulaya. Castle takes a knight g4. Okay. Yeah, interesting is very interesting idea, knight g4. And of course, uh, the, the idea behind this move is clear. Black wants to take on d4 by peace, by knight, I would say. By knight. And of course, h3 here is a bad move because it helps only black. After knight h6, follow it by knight f5, and the other knight can take the pawn on d4. So after knight g4, of course, white can force Blake to take on d4 by instead of <coughs> sorry instead of h3 playing the move queen c1, defending the rook, defending the bishop on b2, and after let's say knight to d4, knight to d4, bishop takes d4. This was the idea actually, because after taking uh, by pawn d3, still there is typical. Um, Typical Benoni structure position, but maybe a better version for black. And if bishop takes d4, white can play knight to c3, and this knight can jump to b5, d5. But queen c2 looks a little bit passive, a little bit passive. All right, let's see if white just developed the knight and plays here knight to d4. Uh, sorry, knight to c3. Knight to c3, leaving d4 pawn under attack. Okay, there is really a big choice. I mean, there is a choice to take this pawn by knight or by pawn. Hmm, I don't know. Let's try both. Knight takes d4. And maybe white can play here knight to a4. I don't know. Actually, me as a as a as a Vugar Gashimov, uh, Vugar Gashimov second. Um, I did analyze a lot uh, Benoni's position, and also the positions from uh, Queen's Indian, which uh, Black actually plays a very similar idea as like leaving D4 square and trying to. To play against the pawn c5, and um, I want to say there is really a, a lot of 
a lot of uh, counter-attacking possibilities, even the positions that computer or the best engines gives like advantage or big advantage for one of the side for white and still black continue to play and 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 fight and and uh and maybe this is the case after knight a4 okay knight takes f3 white can sacrifice the pawn by playing queen takes f3 bishop takes b2 knight takes b2 and if queen takes pawn on b2, white can play knight a4 back. Knight f4 back, followed by knight takes c5. Black allows rook d1, rook e1, h3. Mm, it's a compensation. It's a compensation. So, really, you never know. You never know. Maybe, yeah, knight g4, it came as a surprise. It clearly came as a surprise for Levan. For Levan Pansulaya. So knight c3 looks natural, looks natural. Okay, now let's check. Let's check the move c takes d4. I'm sorry, after knight c3, let's check the move c takes d4. c takes d4. I don't know where to jump with the knight. Where to jump with this knight? To e4, to b5. No, probably, probably to e4, or to a4 actually. Actually, it's not a bad square to e4. A4, sorry. Followed by the move d3, and the knight from a4 can can go to to c5, or after a3. After a3, forcing black to play a5, c5, jump to b6, to jump to b6. So, well, both, both are very interesting possibilities. So knight a4, and I don't know, still the position is playable. So now after d3, knight c5, the knight will play later on to e4. And it's like, more or less, let's say, standard structure, standard position after this um, continuation. Okay, so knight c3, knight c3, I think this is the move. This is the move to play. Um, to complete your development, complete the, the development, trying to activate the knight to play it on a4, attacking c5 pawn. So, maybe nothing wrong with the move d3. But after d3, the pawn d3 might be a target. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. And I don't know, no, this is definitely not, not good. No, knight c3, knight c3 is the move. Or maybe actually knight a3. Maybe knight a3 is the other option. Because knight goes, I mean, after d3, knight goes to c2. Or even sometimes to b5. Yeah, that's also, let's say, uh, uh, an approach to the position knight a3 followed by d3 and knight c2. Nothing wrong with nothing wrong with it. Maybe it's even stronger than knight c3. Because indirectly, the knight from a3 participate to d4 square, to defending of d4 square. Or So I would prefer the move knight a3, knight f3, knight a3, and yes, yes, uh, Levan Pantsulaya probably he's still following, he's following our um, uh, my comment, my comment. So otherwise, of course, I'm joking because, uh, as you know, in in the chess hall you cannot bring any electronic devices, any electronics, uh, any computers. So even you cannot. You cannot uh, take your watch. I mean, not only like iWatch or some, uh, some let's say, uh, this uh, Android watch, but even, uh, let's say, uh, old, old-fashioned, old all kind of watches. Now, this, at, at least at the Olympiad, as I know, even the, the pen, you cannot bring your own pen. 
because who knows, maybe you are a super spy, maybe you have on this pen a, a camera or a, a small computer that can help you to, to, to play better chess. So nowadays, I mean, according to the new FIDE rules, you cannot take anything to, you, to the game, absolutely anything. Even pen, the, the, the organizers, the arbitrators will give you a pen. So these new rules was introduced back, to, back in 2016 at the Baku Chess Olympiad and, uh, and forget about like to, to, to come uh, at the game with your favorite pen or your favorite watch. So it's different times nowadays. All right, night A3. Knight a3, and here, uh, and here, Daniel Dubov uh, has to decide to take by knight, to take by pawn, or even maybe to play knight h6 move. Knight h6, later to play knight to f5, and to take to capture this pawn by the other knight by the other knight. Actually, maybe this is the idea. The all right, all right. So probably knight g4. Let's try to, to follow to follow uh, Russian grandmaster's idea and to on knight a3 to play knight h6. So it's like in a, uh, in a mirror. Yeah, the position is a mirror. So the knight on a3 and the knight on h6 uh, and bishop on b2 and bishop on g7. And now white can play on uh, knight c2 continuing to to uh, defend the d to to defend the d4 pawn and force white force black to take by pawn or maybe white can play such a move like b4. Uh, this is a typical idea from uh, from Queen's Indian, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, b3, b4, trying to gain some space. All right, so we are back to board number one. Bo back to board number one. Anton Korobov from Ukraine plays with Van Hauer from China. Van Hao from China. Anton is thinking. I don't believe that the move knight d7 really surprised him. But he's he knows he's in is in the situation to make a choice. Okay. Uh, no, actually black is to move now. After castle short, black is to move now. And black can take on d3, nothing wrong with. Or black can play queen e7 to complete the development. Same good move with c5 idea. With the c5 idea. I don't know. What also can I recommend here? Okay, this is the easiest way. Like after bishop takes d3, pawn takes d3. But maybe, maybe got, white got a little bit, uh, you know. You know, like um, better chances thanks to to centralized knight on e5 and maybe some pressure on the queen side. So next moves will be like rook c1, first maybe h3, then queen b3 or queen a4, trying not to allow the move c5. Better chances, slightly better chances, but of course um, nothing real and and. Like is in any danger, let you move like knight e8, followed by f6 and trying to trade all the minor pieces. And it's really hard. Okay. Okay, this is the current position after castle. Uh, Grandmaster Van Hao is thinking. Okay, any move is possible here. Still, rook e8 is a normal move. Queen e7 as a h... No, okay, h6 h6 now black should be careful because um, okay still bishop takes f5 he takes f5 brings white absolutely nothing and brings white absolutely nothing no i see any benefits of taking on f5 all right 
All right, so this is the current position. As I told you, it's a quiet game. And I don't believe we'll see here some sharp lines, some uh, dynamics or some attacking ideas here. So let's move to the most, to the more interesting game and to board number three. Board number three, Crafts with Salem. Crafts with Salem. This is the game of the round in my in my opinion, this is my expectation because real uh, board number three, uh, it's a position with opposite, opposite uh, castle, opposite king castle. All right, let's go for a short break and one minute break. Stay with us. Don't leave our live coverage.
Night G7, attacking the strong outpost, the strong knight on E5. Okay, let's try to, um, to make some calculations. So white can take to D7, to C6, and to D5. Oof. A big choice. A big choice. And even, of course, you cannot use your intuition. You are forced just to calculate straight lines. To take on D7, I'll prefer to take on D7 because, because definitely taking on C6 is not the move. After knight C6, BC6, it's clear that uh, opening the B file, now D5 pawn is not hanging anymore and white's continuation, white's continuing by playing E5 here and getting big advantage. All right, so knight takes D7, back to this position. If bishop takes d7, pawn takes c5. Because if black ta white takes knight takes d5, c takes d4, I think this position is clearly better for black. And if white takes on c5, temporarily white won a pawn, but I think it should be a strong compensation. And uh, maybe even by playing here d4, because if e5, oh, actually e5 is also interesting because on bishop g5, f6, the bishop is trapped, but this is not the end. This is not the end. This is not the end because white can sacrifice, I mean, white already lost a piece, I mean, sacrifice the piece. Queen takes d5 check. Rook king to h8 or h7, I don't know. Let's say king to h7 protecting the g6 square and after castle long castle long the bishop d7 is under attack bishop let's say f5 bishop f5 and queen c4 i know now this is a bad move queen f5 because after taking taking e4 white save the bishop and white is at least pawn up um Bishop D, but where to move the bishop? Where to move the bishop to E8? Yeah, let's move the bishop to E8. Yeah, still the white should retreat the queen to C4 or to E4. To, okay, let's try to queen C4. Queen is under attack, queen C8. Queen C8 and bishop D3. I don't know. Really, I don't know what to say about this position. Uh, if, of course, black black is not forced to take the piece immediately because after f takes g5, h takes g5, rook takes h5 is a strong threat and and it's clear that it's a compensation. Definitely, this is a strong compensation. Three pawns plus plus uh, the attack against uh, black's king. So. Yeah, this is, in my opinion, this is the most interesting continuation. Uh, taking on d7 after knight d7, bishop takes d7, d takes c5, e5, f, uh, f6, and queen takes d5, sacrificing a piece. Sacrificing a piece. I don't know. I. This is, of course, this is only fantasies, but really, the game is interesting. The position is interesting, double-edged. And uh, both sides, both players, keeps good chances to uh, to attack uh, enemies' kings. Okay, this is one possibility. This is one possibility. After knight d7, actually, I didn't check the move knight d5. Okay, let's try. Knight takes d5. Okay, obviously that uh, black should take the knight on e5 immediately or not. Immediately or not. Can white, can black take first cd4? Or I am cd4? No, it's nothing wrong with this move. Nothing wrong with this move. Knight takes c6. Pawn c6. Knight c7, of course, e5. Black wins. 
Bishop C7, Queen E8, unclear. I don't know what is what is wrong with this move. What's wrong with this move? Okay, if pawn takes on d4, knight takes c5, pawn takes c5, knight e5, the position is, I don't know, it's, maybe it's about equal. The position is about equal. All right, all right, so this is the knight takes d5 is a possible move. And if black takes immediately, knight takes e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5, still, uh, and maybe castle long now, yeah? Sorry, castle long. Castle long now. So probably white is more active thanks to knight on C, knight on d5. But from the other hand, the, the, the bishop on g7 is a really a monster. A monster piece. And let's say after bishop e6, uh, bishop e6 followed by rook d8, maybe sometimes black can take on d5. Blanks. No, the position is double-edged. I don't believe. I don't believe uh, it's okay. White can play e4, uh, protecting the knight, opening the diagonal of c1, h6, c1, h6, and maybe white can play bishop h6, changing this monster. Now, okay, black can play. Of course, bishop takes d5. Pawn takes or queen takes and queen b6 and and the position is unclear. Let's say c3. Yeah, it's it's just a game. It's just a it's just a very complex and and sharp middle game position. So knight d7. To me, the most interesting uh, the interesting move is knight takes d7, bishop takes d7, as, as I said, and d takes c5, sacrifice a piece. Really, I would be very glad, and I'll be very mm, pleasant pleasant to see this uh, in the game. Mm, no, ah, yeah, no. The game white took on d5. Okay, this is also not a bad move, and I believe, according to my like previous uh, um, analysis, previous lines, the position is about uh, equal. The position is about equal. Equal. Okay, let's go to board number one. Let's go to board number one, Korobo van Hao. It's a quiet position of symmetrical, uh, of symmetrical uh, London system, symmetrical, bishop f4, bishop f5. And the last move is the surprising one. Bishop from d6 goes back to d7, to e7, I'm sorry. Okay, the, the idea behind this move is simple. Black wants to take on e5. Because, yeah, it's now it's very hard to get out of this knight. Okay, thank you. We have a beautiful view from our camera. We can see the game. We can follow. So after bishop e7, after bishop e7, white played bishop takes f5, e takes f5, c4. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, d c4, and knight c4, if I'm not mistaken. Can I see the view from the camera, please? Yeah. This is the, no, this is not the current position. The current position is after bishop f5, e f5, c4, c4, c4 the knight is on d5 yeah and white to move how this how this after bishop e7 i'm trying to to see how it how it was possible okay one more time bishop takes c5 pawn takes bishop takes f5 pawn takes f5 c4 D takes c4, yeah, knight takes c4, knight d5, yeah. Finally, I did manage to, I did manage to reconstruct the move order. So this is famous retro analysis, retro analysis game. It helps, it helps uh, in our, uh, if in our analysis with 15 minutes delay. Okay, knight d5, the, Bishop g3, yeah, obviously this was the only move. 
Okay, now black can take on e5 or play c6. These are these are two moves. Probably the the most direct move is taking on e5. And if black takes by knight, sometimes black can use the idea of playing f4. Sacrificing the pawn, but make the pawn d4 isolated and weak. I don't know if immediately, but generally, I'm thinking generally, let's say c6. And one day f4, who knows? No, knight f6, knight f6, the other knight goes to e4. The other knight goes to e4 after bishop e3, knight f6. Knight e4 is a, is a threat, kind of a threat. Black wants to, to, to change his knight for the bishop. And yeah, actually this is the, the rule of, of, uh, of, one, of two knights, one square. Yeah, famous, famous rule uh, from Mark Dvoretsky's books. So if you have... Two knights for the same square. Don't change one of the knight. Just leave these knights to, to, I mean, to pretend to the same square. And one 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 knight will be always free, always in a bad position. So this time knight on, on c4. Actually, the knight on c4 can jump to a5. Now I, I just now I realized. So after, let's say knight a5. Knight f5, white wants to take the pawn b7, and let's say after rook b8, there is always like tactical idea with knight, knight c6. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this is just uh, because now c5 is a kind of a threat. Queen b3. So Anton Korobov played, uh, let's say, a more direct move, def uh, developing the queen with the tempo, connecting the rooks. The move is according to all chess rules. The all chess rules put some pressures on on uh, the knight b5 on d5. The rook now can go to d1, c1, e1, any squares. Yeah, queen b3. Okay, the most important thing: the pawn b7 is under attack, and obviously black cannot play b6 because give to give the six x square is really not a good idea. So here black can choose or to play queen, e, queen c8, like defending everything. The pawn on c5, on f5, the pawn on b7. Or to play the move rook b8, to leave the queen free. Hoping to play knight e4, and later on to exchange the knight for the, for the bishop and to play c6. Rook b8. I think Van Hao will play rook b8. Yes. Yes, I'm, yeah, rook b8, very good, very good for Chinese grandmaster. Actually, he spent just one minute, just one minute for, for this move. I don't know, I would, I would think even I would consider the move queen c8 too, but maybe that's why he's 27 grandmaster and I am not, not to spend time for this kind of moves. And here, you know, I was thinking for Anton. If he wants to uh, to continue the game, like in a, to to game to make the game more sharper, maybe he can play the move f3 here. Maybe this is not an, an objectively the strongest move, but it gives White the possibility of playing e4, attacking the knight, building up a strong center, and keep keep more pieces on the board. I don't know, maybe f3, f3 is the move here. If not f3, okay, white can play knight to d2 here, just defending the square, e4. White can play rook on d1, any rook on d1. Let's say rook d1, knight e4, rook c1. This kind of chess, any one of us can play. Just put the rooks on the open files and wait. And actually, nothing wrong with this strategy. It's called stra central strategy. You put your all your pieces on the on the open files, on the central files, and mobilize all your forces. <clears throat> but as I know, um, Anton is a very creative player, and um, he will try to find more than 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 
then the rook d1 and rook c1 moves. Okay, I, I really I hope that he will play the move something like f3, trying to complicate the position. Also, move bishop like bishop f4. It's a possible move, trying to to trade the bishop not for the knight but for the bishop. I mean bishop exchange bishop, and the position is still about equal and I don't know. And the, the game is still quiet. Okay, let's go back to board number four. The board, board number four. Also board, board number three. Uh, board number four, thank you. Thank you, board number four. Actually, Vocatura Daniele plays with uh, Rapport Richard. Or Richard, actually. I don't know how is uh, to pronounce correct in, in Hungarian. Or how Hungarians are pronouncing his name. So Richard is the English, or this is, and Richard maybe is more, uh, more German or more uh, Hungarian. I don't know exactly. I think I think uh, I mean I think he is Richard. He is Richard. Okay. So this is for only for the specialists. Uh, the current position, the current position. My opinion, White is slightly better. Thanks to strong bishop on b2. Strong bishop on b2. And definitely white needs to play d5. But it's black to move. And black played d5 himself. It's a correct. Now the bishop on b2 is less active. The pawn on, on d4 is stuck. And, and, um, and after rook e1, c6, uh, Italian Grand Master took on d5, which I really don't like because uh, with the symmetrical structure, there is no chances to get an advantage. If, for instance, a move earlier, he will take on d5. Let's say here, take on d5, e d5. That's a different story. There's a different story. There is some pressure uh, on c5, let's say after rook e1, preparing the move rook c1, or maybe knight f4, knight uh, d3, or even f3, e4 idea. So there's a lot of play uh, trying to activate the bishop. But with uh, this version after rook e1, c6, c takes d5, c takes d5. Really, I don't see anything here for white. Mm, okay, maybe black can already start to play for, 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 for some small advantage. I don't. Know. Okay, the position remains equal, but definitely c takes d4 in this moment is not the right choice. Okay, can we move to board number three? Maybe we can see some some action here. So after knight takes d4, knight takes d5, c takes d4, followed by grandmaster. Salem. The move is possible. Actually, uh, here I was recommended to take it on e5 immediately or after uh, c takes d4, e takes d4, and now to take this knight on d5. Both moves are possible. c d5, knight d5, castle long, castle long, and let's say the move bishop e6, and the, the move bishop e6, which actually is a good move, stop the move bishop h6, because this one just lose a piece after queen takes d5. And comparing to the variation with the white pawn on e3 and, and black on c5, now the c file is open, and that's it's a fantastic thing for black. And also, white could play e4, defending the knight. But from the other hand, I have the resource to to play bishop h6, or to play bishop h6. Okay, so can white play here the move queen e3? Queen e3, maybe it looks like it's, it is a dangerous move because black cannot capture on d5. Bishop takes e5. Actually, black can. Take on e5, queen e5, and e6. And of course, 
c4 is not the move so on c4 black can play any move like i don't know like queen c8 for instance and if not if not uh, c4 black's next move is rook c8 queen b6 okay and the position is about equal and the position is about equal all right so um, one more time c takes d4 and here uh, taking on d4, I don't believe there is any intermediate move like knight takes c6 and something to c7. No, there is no intermediate move. So c takes d4, e takes d4, e takes d4, and knight takes d5, knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, knight e5, castle long, bishop e6, and queen e3. This is my prediction. And yeah, the game is quite is equal. Let's go to board number two. Board number two. In one of the m interesting game, one of the most interesting game of the round, the game Levan Pantsolaya against Daniel Dubov from Russia. So after knight takes takes d3. Knight this and the last move is bishop g4. Provocative move. A uh, black is provoking the move f3, and after that the bishop on g2 will be closed. And if and obviously it's even worse to play queen d2 because after knight f3, black takes uh, the strong bishop. Actually, it's not for free. It's not for free. Maybe white can win a pawn or simplify position like takes, takes, queen to e5. Ah, but there is an intermediate move. I don't know. Bishop e2, rook e1, and e5. Can black play like this? And white is in trouble. Queen e4. In trouble or not? Or black is in trouble? And f5. Oh, sorry, f5 lost the bishop. I was thinking, uh, uh, sorry, bishop h5. And if g4, of course, f5. So g4 doesn't win a piece. And if not g4, if queen b7, okay, definitely there is compensation here. It's clear, thanks to, to weak squares on the, on the, on the king side. Uh, black is real big compensation. For instance, black can play g5 here. Follow it by bishop g2, f5, bishop g6, f5, f4, pushing pawns. So no, this is not um, this is not good. And if on bishop g4, black plays, uh, black white plays f3, bishop f5, and okay, there is of course knight e1 always, knight e1, and then g4, f4, black. I see any problems for black. And for white, I don't know. I don't know. I would say that black can play, let's say, h5 here to stop the move g4. And yeah, no, black's position is clearly better. Clearly better. Black can play queen d7, starting some action on the queen side, like playing rook b8, b5, or b5 immediately, or a5. Black, keep, black keeps better and better chances. So bishop g4, nice move, nice, really nice move. Typical, typical for this kind of the position, provocative. So or white plays here queen d2 and goes to this unclear position. But really, mm, as you are a, as a Benoni player, you never want to give the bishop from g2. I mean, black bishop on g7 and white bishop on g2. Sometimes you prefer to be close this bishop with f3 and so on and so on, but never to give this bishop. So I don't believe, I don't believe uh, Levan will give the bishop. So I'm expecting the move f3, bishop f5, and knight e1. Knight e1, h5, and black is slightly better in my opinion. All right. All right, interesting, so interesting game. 
Right, let's go to, to board number one. To board number one, Korobo Van Hao. Korobo Van Hao. Uh, if there is any big changes after Queen B3, Rook B8, I'm expecting from Anton the move F3. Really, I like him to play this move because otherwise the position is too too dry, I would say, too simple. Uh, yeah. Okay, the other moves I cannot recommend. Now Anton is still thinking. He, he really he I mean he understand this is the this is the position to decide or to go bishop h4 and to simplify everything and the position and probably to go home with half a point or to play f3 and try to achieve something try to play for initiative even with some risk even with some risk to take but otherwise really it's hard to to win a tournament if you don't if you don't take any risk okay bishop h4 or f3 this two different approach two different uh two different ideas two different method to play chess uh board number five actually is also interesting fedosev fedosev sarkisian Fedosev Sarkisian, the knight went back. Thank you. We have the current position on the board. Um, Fedosev Sarkisian, bishop to d7, bishop to d2, knight back to f6, and queen e1. Let's change the queens and play the end game. This is the words behind the move queen e1. Actually, you cannot speak to each other, but it's after playing queen e1. Really, I think I'm better in the end game, and let's change the queens. Let's change the queens. And, uh, okay. So the idea behind this, idea, this move is after takes, takes. One day, white will take the bishop on, on, on b6 and, and play the position with, with the strong center and, and bishop's pair. But... From the other hand, I see any many um, any weaknesses in Black's position, and Black is very solid. Let's say I would play here Bishop to d7. If there is anything better than this, Bishop to d7. I'm not afraid of Knight b6 because I takes b6, c5, Bishop c6. If White is better, the, the advantage is really m minimal, like. I don't think I don't think White can achieve something very serious in this same game, because sometimes there is a lot of escaping ideas. Later on, let's say after Knight b6, a b6, Black can play d5, e5, Knight e4, sacrificing a pawn and transposing to a position with uh, with opposite color bishops. This is also a let's say a, a method, a defending method, a method to make a draw. No, it's nothing, nothing wrong with Black's position. So Queen e1, White played, ho White played Queen e1, hoping f to, to, to get a better run game. But I don't believe it, this is something real. And by the, from the other hand, uh, Black is kind of a force to go the end game. Because after Queen h5, White can play the move. Okay, now or a little bit later, the move f5. And the queen is a little bit in a very unpleasant position on h5. So some always there is some bishop e2 idea, rook f3, rook h3. The queen can be trapped any moment. So I believe that queen e1, queen takes e1, rook takes e1, and soon we'll uh, see the this end game. All right, so. Um, Let's go to the other games. Let's all go to the other games. Mm, Vocaturo report board number four. We just saw the C takes D5. The move which I really which I with I really disagree with. Like taking on D5 when you when your opponent can play the 
the symmetrical structure is not a re good recommendation. So here, C takes D5, C takes D5, and I don't see any problems for black. I don't see any problems for black. Okay. Uh, the other games, yeah, the other games, Salem, Black to Salem's game, board number three, Crafts of Salem. Crafts of Salem, oof, what is this? What kind of chess is this? I'm shocked. It's a shocking move. After C takes D4, E takes D4, I was expecting the natural looking move like Knight takes E5 and and in my opinion, nothing wrong with the knight from d7 goes to b8. Wow. Wow. Really modern chess. Really modern chess. So the knight from g8 went to b8. <laughs> uh, highly original idea. Okay, 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 let's start to think, let's start to think, knight to b8, wow. <laughs> I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, so, okay, let's play the most, let's say, the most natural move, like develop the bishop on c4. Because taking on, on c6, yeah, it's actually blacks, exactly like black wants to, to achieve. Taking on c6, taking and take on d4. So let's develop the bishop on c4, defending the knight. And black can play here or e6 or knight or bishop e6. Okay, let's play in the Grunfeld, uh, in the Grunfeld style. Bishop e6. Can white do something like some combinations here? No, it doesn't work. There is any combinations like knight g6 or, or thing like this. There is anything. Hmm. Okay, and, and if knight goes back, of course black will take the pawn. Let's say knight takes d4. Color. Carlson, Ka sorry, Carlson, Castle, Carlson, Carlson, long, and maybe knight to c6, or bishop takes, yeah, let's go to board number three, interesting position is here, board number three, but we are on board number three, actually, we are on board number three, and after knight b8, White played the move knight b4. All right, I can't guess any move today. I don't know if it's good or bad. Actually, I believe this is good because uh, I'm already, I mean, a retired chess player and nowadays chess is completely different. But still, I, I had like some illusions that I still can understand some chess can can find some moves, but not this time. Probably, probably the, it's too late. The time already went too far. All right, knight b4 and knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Hmm. Knight takes d4. All right, so. The not a natural continuation here is castle long. Nothing to think. Absolutely. You just castle long, you attack the knight on d4, and black is to decide what to do. Black is to decide. Okay. Let's try to make a move, but without any conclusions. Really, I don't want to to gur gur, uh, like here Arab people are saying gur gur. Yes, castle long. Okay, natural move, and let's find a move. Okay, knight c6 is not a blunder. 
or it is a blunder actually. No, it's it is not a blunder. Knight takes c6. No, no, it's, it is a blunder actually. I did. Knight c6, and no, it's not a blunder. But after queen d8, most probably. Queen d8, rook d8, knight c6, rook takes d1, king takes d1, b c6. No, I see any advantage here for white. Maybe slightly better, but let's say after move c3, no, but the position is equal. The position is equal. So one more time, castle long, the other knight goes to c6. Knight, the other knight goes to, takes to c6. Knight takes c6. And queen takes d8. Or knight takes c6 here, yeah, this time. Queen takes d2. Comparing to that variation, white, uh, white's rook is, is very active on a d-file. And the bishop c4. Oh yeah, this is clear. This is clearly better for white. The position actually is very similar to dragon variation of Sicilian defense. One of Sicilian defense, the structure, this is with a d5 move. And um, yeah, that's clear better for white here. So one more time, one more time. Castle long, castle long, knight c6. Knight takes c6. Okay, black is not forced to take by, by knight. Let's take by pawn back. c3. I don't know. First, we should calculate all attacking moves. This is the rule of chess. c3. And obviously the knight can move because c6 is hanging. And is there any counterplay? Yes, a5. a5. Yeah, the position is very sharp. The position is very sharp. a5, knight c2 maybe. a5 immediately. Yeah, same idea, but why not to do it immediately? So no knight c6, but a5. Okay. Okay, so at the end, the pawn on a2 is hanging. A small demonstration. Queen takes d4, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, a takes b4, rook takes b4, rook takes a2, and black is doing fine here. By the way, by the way, instead of rook takes a2, let's play for double attack. Takes, takes, ah, actually there is rook b5. I, thought, I was thinking that after rook e4, black can win one more tempo by playing bishop f5, rook e3, and rook takes a2. And definitely this is a uh, better version. But there is rook b5. Okay, so a takes b5, a takes b4, rook b4, rook a2 is enough, more than enough. I mean, black is clearly better. Uh, all right, all right, so a5, very interesting idea. Instead of knight c6, a5, queen takes d4, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, a5. Is there any choice? Once again. Yeah, let's go to board number one to see if some interesting... h3, no. Anton preferred the move h3. To keep the bishop on the diagonal, and if knight e4, the bishop will retreat to h2. But one, one second, please. One second on second, and after b5, followed by knight d2. Oh, a lot of things to calculate here. Let's say knight a5, knight d2. Knight c6, I don't know where exactly. Let's say after queen c2 or queen d3. Knight takes f1 and knight c6. Knight c6. Queen to e8. And now white can choose now to take the, the rook or the knight. Okay, let's try. Knight takes b8. Maybe black can play an intermediate move. Knight takes e3. Oh, 
Who will take more pieces? So knight c6, knight c4. I'm not using the computer assistant, so really maybe it's a, any, every move is a mistake, but I'm trying to, to show you the most logical moves here. Let's say after knight e7, queen e7, and taking on, on c4, still the position is about equal. Let's say after queen to c7, fo fo to, to d7, follow it by f4. Actually, maybe even white is, uh, black is slightly better. I mean, white is worse. White is worse. Of course, this end game is, uh, this move is too, this line is uh, too long. And all the long lines are always bad, always incorrect. Okay, okay, so actually, Anton Korbev spent a lot of time, a lot of time, because really, you need to calculate. You need to calculate the, all the consequences after the move B5. Because you can lose material or you should get them. Maybe if you like, and to calculate accurate, maybe you can get some compensation for the exchange. Maybe opposite, you can win a pawn, or you can get, or you can, uh, you can win material, and and your opponent can get some compensation, enough or not enough. Really, a lot of a lot of things to calculate. All right, so knight one more time, h3, knight e4, bishop h2, h3, knight e4, and bishop h2. And of course, black can play something like, and not that uh, provocative, not b5. Like a6, I don't know, f6. Even c6 is not a bad move. But of course, it's tempting yeah, to, to play b5 and later on knight d2. Okay, let's try to calculate one more time. Knight to a5, knight d2. I don't know. To me, d3 looks like the best square. Knight, queen to d3. Knight takes f1. Knight c6. By the way, maybe the other knight. Let's try with the other knight. Okay. As I said, the position is about equal at the end. But still very complicated. And I believe now Van Hao will, will try to calculate all the moves. So let's go to board number four. The board number four to the game of Daniele. Vocaturo against Richard, Richard Rapport. And actually, White got some advantage. Okay, actually, no, no. Uh, no advantage, no advantages. So after Queen D3, Queen B7. No, nothing here, nothing. Uh, the position is about equal. Rook c6, rook takes c6, knight takes c6. Uh, Richard Rapport seems to be absent at the board because otherwise you will, I mean, this is the position, otherwise you will take knight takes c6 less than a half of the, of the second, I would say. Just make the move and after think. So usually the coaches recommend, so first you should think and after make the move. But here you really don't need to think, you just take back the rook and after start to think. Okay, the position is about equal, I don't know. Ah, no. Actually, the, 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 the opponents, they agreed to a draw. Uh, they agreed to a draw. So rook takes c6 was a draw offer, was a draw offer. White offered the draw and black did accept. The position is about equal, equal and I don't know if really there is something to, to comment here. So normal grandmaster game and nothing interesting from a, uh, from a spectator. As, as a spectator, as a commentator, I can't really can say anything, uh, uh, anything special except white c takes d5. It was a, uh, a bad move, a, a positional blunder, a positional bad move. But okay, it's just not to, I mean, it was like not a losing move, but it's like uh, you abandon the, the, the idea of playing for the advantage. All right. So this is draw. We have the first result on, on, on from the leading group. And board number four draw. The other games are still in progress. 
And let's go back to board number three, uh, Craft Sif with Salem. To me, this is the most interesting game of the of the day. So Castle E5, A5, sorry. And after Queen takes D4, the position is about equal. Let's see if if White can improve improve the play here. I don't know, like so many moves come to my mind. Even something like completely crazy and stupid most probably knight a6 i don't know don't laugh please but uh, uh is there is this is just the idea to not to let black to open the a file and after like let's say knight a6 knight takes a6 queen takes d4 i understand the position maybe it's about equal nothing special but maybe after you know what after uh, queen takes d4 maybe white is worse maybe white is worse here maybe white is worse here because uh black can i don't know maybe start some attack so let's say king b1 rook a7 Black will bring the bishop to f5 or to a6, knight to d7, rook to a8. So really, it's it's. I understand this is an end game, and 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 we cannot speak like about an, a, a king side attack. I mean, attack on the on the and against the king. But you know, you know, even in the end game, even in the end game, actually only queens and the knights and one pair of knights are out of the board. So still, there is a lot of pieces like two rooks. Two bishops and the knight to create uh, dangerous threats. I believe here maybe black can play. Black can hope for. Unless no, unless I was thinking that there is knight g6, but knight c6. Okay, of course I didn't see this, but it's by miracle. By miracle, black wins after this because rook on b4 is under attack, and if black if white takes the rook on f8, knight takes b4. The knight on f8 is trapped. And it is trapped and black wins this game. So once again, once again after move a5. Yeah, very interesting play. Knight to b8 a5. Wow. I'm impressed by, by black by black's play, really. So the idea knight to d7 from d7 to d to b8 never will cross to my mind. Okay. Okay. Interesting and and here a5. So probably watch here here should realize that there is no advantage and and play knight a6 play equal position. A plays equal position unless unless there is a kind of a move like a uh, no bishop h6 is too much. Bishop h6 is too much. I always wants to I want to change the the bishops the black squares bishops. I don't know. All right. All right. So knight a6. Just take the knight. Yeah, accept the gift. And the knight that started from g8 went to f6, d7, b8, and now the knight will play to a6. Yeah, this is the chess. This is chess. This is the game. This is the uh, this is our game. All right, knight a6. This is the this is the move, I believe. This is the move to to equalize, and no, of course, white cannot get adva any advantage here. All right, all right. So let's see. Ah, no, he didn't go for it. He didn't go. He played queen d4, more direct way, more direct of approach. And actually, here I'm, I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit worried about white's position. So rook takes b4, and now black is thinking to take on b4 or to play bishop takes e5 and knight c6. I don't think black should simplify to simplify uh, a position. The position. Rook takes a2. Go Salim. Go Salim for b rook takes c2, and 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 the most important thing, yeah, that knight takes g6 doesn't work because of knight c6. So otherwise, uh, bishop takes e5 is the position is, I don't know, why to give the bishop 
I mean, okay, maybe there is something. No, rook a2. Okay, let's go one more time for bishop e5, bishop e5, knight c6, rook b5, and rook a2 now. Nothing wrong with this. Maybe this is a strong, let's say, king b1. Black can try to play here, bishop e6, followed by rook a8. No, it's not about mate, of course. It's uh, impossible here to give mate. But maybe, you know, some initiative, the rook is on the second rank and uh, and creating some threats. Because after b3, knight takes... Ah, uh, no, the rook is under attack, actually. Ah, that b3 is unpleasant move. So no time for black to take on e5. Because rook e2 is hanging. And if rook a8, of course, bishop, bishop will come back to b2 and... There is any attack, the pawn b7 is hanging, bishop spare, and black is in big trouble. So no, 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 of course not. So rook takes a2 is a normal move. Of course, uh, just uh, Grandmaster Salim wants to double check the, the, the rook takes a2 on knight g6 move, but the calculation is really easy for him. But after knight g6, knight c6, white lose a piece. White lose a piece. Okay, let's see one more time from the camera if uh, Grandmaster Salem made a move. Come on, go Salem. Rook takes pawn. Rook takes pawn. Or, 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 there is an intermediate move. Aha. Uh -huh. There is an intermediate move to play Rook a5 first. Rook a5 first. Attacking the knight, and if the knight goes, then the rook takes a2. And if rook b5, now rook takes a2. I don't know. That's really, a, I would say, two big subtilities to calculate this. Two, like, no, no, of course, straight. The straight move rook takes a2 is is my recommendation. But of course, I'm today I'm, I, I'm always wrong. So in this game, I cannot guess any move. So. No big surprise that that, that Salem will play uh, something different. Something different here. So knight c6. Uh, sorry, bishop e5 and followed by knight c6. Uh, rook a5 or rook takes a2. These are the choices. These are the moves. These are the candidates. Candidates moves here. Rook takes a2. This is my, uh, my move. All right. All right, so back to the game of board number one. Board number one, Anthony, Anton Korobov. Anton Korobov. Korobov, in Russian, Korob, Korobka, Korob. It means a box. It means a box. I don't know what is the... Mm. So in the game, black played queen to c8 and white played f3. Mixing the ideas. Okay, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. So there is no uh, there is no knight e4. Um, now maybe white white wants to advance a four one day. Actually, why not? Why not? Why not? So queen c8 and and f3. Can black play e c5 here? c5 i do think that after rook c1 the position might be unpleasant unless black can continue an aggressive style like b5 knight a5 and c4 nothing wrong with this actually nothing wrong nothing wrong i don't know it's a messy it's a messy position. Let's say knight to b6, takes on b3, knight e8, knight e7, king h8, knight c. I'm sorry. The the the, the bishop on e7 is is defended by the knight. No, I'm just I just blundered the queen. C4. Now then c4, then black white is in trouble. If e3 pawn is hanging. And no way to defend. Okay. Knight c4, dc4, queen takes b8. But this is completely different story. Yeah? Takes, takes, rook takes, knight c4. 
Uh, it's a two pawns and a rook for a two pieces, for two minor pieces. And this is an end game. By all the rules, white should be slightly better. But the pawn e3 is a, I don't know, is a mm, kind of weakness. And I don't, I don't see, like, there is no, there is no bad pieces, uh, there is no black, black pieces. I don't believe there is something real for white here. It's a playable position, playable end game. So queen c8, uh, Anton Korobov f3, Anton Plo Korobov played f3, and and c5 is a possible move to me. Or black can start with b5 actually first. And if knight a5 to play c5 now. But the only thing this allows the move knight to c6. But from the other hand, black can play c4. C4. Oh well, knight c4, I don't believe. The knight c6 is under attack and and yeah, and black can see size the initiative. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now we are going for a short break. We can make some small conclusions. So there is only one draw on board number four, Vocaturo Rapport. On the other games, it's a big fight. And stay with us. After a short break of five minutes break, we'll be back from our live coverage of round six of Abu Dhabi. Chess Festival Master Tournament.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, dear chess friends. We are back on air from Abu Dhabi Master Tour Tournament Round 6. And let's see what's going on on uh, board number one. Leaders, leaders are playing each other. Grandmaster Anton Korobov plays with white pieces against Grandmaster Van Hao. And after H3... Uh, Anton combined his move with f3 after queen c8. I don't know. I know interesting idea. At least, uh, at least Anton realized that he can try to play for an advantage and push the pawn f3. Later on, maybe his intention is to play e4 to occupy the center to uh, to attack the knight on d4, the, the, on d5, the, the the knight outpost. From the other hand, it brings black uh, a real good chances to to play c5. To play c5. So both are both move are possible here to play c5 immediately, or after b5 first. Let's say knight a5, c5. Okay, the game is very. The game will be very um, sharp now, but. Uh, otherwise, uh, really, white will play rook to c1, rook d1, and e4, or queen d3, and c size the advantage. So, and take the advantage. So, I think that uh, Chinese grandmaster will think about now to play c5. Okay, board number one. This is the current position, and still, Van Hao is thinking. He is down to 26, 26 minutes only. Wow. It's a real serious decision. So, um, probably this is one of the key moments of the game. Now, this, if let's speak in, in, in uh, Boris Spassky's former world champion, uh, in the chess game, there is two or three key moments. The others are like calculations, are sh forced lines, are some uh, moves by intuitions or you know what to do and the rest you know two three times you need to think per game like seriously and this is probably one of the key moment and what is the difference between let's say uh, very strong so elite players and the others they feel one is the one is the real key moment of the game and Van Hao thinks this this is the moment. This is the moment, and he's decides he's deciding to play c5 or not to play or to play b5 first and and c5 after. Yeah, only okay. Nothing wrong with the moves like queen e6 here. And later on, bringing the rook to c8 and c5 or c5 with the queen on e6. Absolutely, everything is fine. Everything is fine with these moves. Uh, all right, all right. This is the board number one, and and here Van Hau oh, Van Hauer is taking his time to 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 decide to decide to push the pawns or to play to continue to play Queen e6 and maybe mm, just to. Uh, by the way, by the way, there, there is one more idea that I mentioned, and I really like to to show it again is the move f4 this is the move f4 just to sacrifice a pawn and the idea behind this move okay if after f4 here yeah white takes on f4 white sacrifice black just sacrificed the pawn nothing concrete i don't want to take the your pawn back immediately i just want to i secured my knight on d5 i'll play c6 Slowly improving my pieces like rook d8. Maybe one day I'll play b6, b5, queen to e6, or maybe bishop rook d8, rook e8, bishop f8. And it's a long term compensation. Actually, maybe there is knight h5 here, the direct move, and taking the pawn f4 back. Yeah, actually, I miss this. So what, even white is forced to take by bishop, and after knight takes d4, pawn takes d4, black can play queen e6. Trying to move the queen to d5. In my opinion, this is a huge. I mean, this is a or knight d5 immediately. It's a clear compensation. Clear compensation. Oh yes, this is one more. One more. Um, 
uh, his uh, good compensation. One more idea, one more possibility for black. So it's not only about b5, c5 line uh, lines, but it's also the move f4. Actually, now, when after I saw the idea of f4 immediately here, really, I start to like this move more. I start to like this move more. All right. Uh, let's move to board number two. Levan Pantsulaya. Yeah, thank you. Board number two. Levan Pantsulaya plays with Daniel Dubov. Daniel Dubov. And yes, he did play after bishop g4, f3. And I think white is in kind of a trouble. White is in kind of a trouble here. Knight c2, knight c6. Uh, knight c2, knight c6. The weaknesses on the king's side are somehow, I don't know. White cannot push f4 because g4 is losing. g5, of course, is not possible because f4. So there is always, there is always some problems, some small problems on the queen's side. A knight c6. Maybe white should push here b4. Trying to create some threats on the queen side. Yeah, this is definitely, this is the plan to play on the king side. So one more time, I would like to see the position from the camera. Did black play here knight c6 or, or not? This is the, po this is the position uh, on, on our live transmission with 15 minutes delay. Yeah, he did. Thank you. Thank you, knight c6, and now Pantsulaya, Levant Pantsulaya is thinking to, to advance the pawn on b4 or not. But I believe this is the only chance. This is the only chance. He needs, definitely he needs counterplay. He needs some air. He needs uh, activities for the pieces. Uh, otherwise, black will just stabilize the position, like by playing a5 or even rook b8, b5, or bringing the rook to d8, bishop f7, f4, or... There is a lot of there is a lot of moves to improve the position and for the white pieces um, I mean the, for the white really the only counterplay is to advance the pawn B. Okay, maybe white can play like queen e2, rook e1, bringing the rook rook a2 one nothing wrong with nothing wrong with. All right. So I like black's position more. I I believe black is slightly better, but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I don't know. So everything is about the king. Really in chess is everything about the king. So if your king is on bad position, no matter how many pieces you have, no, many, no matter uh, about pawn structure and all other positional, uh, positional advantages. So position of the king is the first criteria of, uh, of the position. If the king is, is, is in a bad position and it's no pieces and you cannot improve your king's position and the, the position is worse. And I believe this is the this is the this is the case. This is the case and uh, white's position is, is is compromised by 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 the move F F three G four H three. Anyway, the position is far to be decided, so I believe that objectively objectively the position is, is about equal. Is about equal. Okay, Salem, board number three. Board number three, Crafts if Salem. Uh, we left in the moment when uh, Black was thinking to take on a2 to play bishop e5 and knight c6, or maybe to play an intermediate move like rook a5. Did Salem made, make his choice here? So rook takes a2 was my uh, my prediction my uh, my I mean the best move in my opinion. But of course of course uh, I might be wrong and I'm, I'm probably wrong uh, because really in this game hardly I could guess any moves like maybe one of or two actually the move h5 and the opening somehow I I I, I predicted so the move which uh, Play, is playing quite often by Grandmaster, French Super Grandmaster Maxime Vachier Le Graf. And Salim, of course, he played h5. Uh, no need to to give White any attacking idea, any attacking prospects. So, 
And here we still we don't have the move. So if can we have the camera view from from the board number three, board number three? Because really this is an important decision of of black species of Grandmaster Salem. Did he take on a two or he went for bishop e five? And after bishop bishop rook a two is like keeping all the pieces on the board and and trying to to create some threats against white's king. Uh, no, 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 no. Once again, I'm wrong. Once again, I'm uh, once again I'm wrong. He played the rook a five first. Okay, one of the candidates uh, that I mentioned. And after knight. Sorry, no, actually he did take, he did take, yeah, sorry. And after king b8, he didn't, after king b1, he didn't play the, 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 the rook to, he didn't play the rook to a8, but he played now to rook a5. Knight c4, knight c6, knight takes a5, everything is forced. Knight takes b4, simplifications and bishop d2, yes. This is the only move, otherwise the bishop will, f5 will come with tempo. Alright, this is the first uh, moves, and now black should play knight to d5. Yeah, this is the current position, and I think knight to, knight to d5 is the move, and if bishop c4, rook d8, and still there is some tension in the position. Black will play bishop to f5. B okay B six no B six lose, and actually B uh, rook no now now right uh, knight to B six is a threat, knight to B six is a threat. Yeah of course, of course the position is equal. I mean nothing to nothing to nothing to say. I mean it's hard to to give one of the one of the side advantage. So one more time, bishop d2, this is the current position. Is there in anything better than, than the move uh, uh, knight to d5? And if black continue to play an aggressive move and sacrifice the pawn by b6, I don't believe, really I don't believe, but let's, let's check. Takes on b5, on b4, takes on a5. Okay, now I can choose. Or actually, I can't because I I'm forced to take this one. On bishop takes e7, rook e8. Bishop goes somewhere I don't know to c5. Rook e1, and this is a checkmate. Actually, not. But if not a checkmate, just rook takes f1. Winning material and the game. Give me material, friend. All right, so. Um, Pawn a7 is untouchable. Let's take the other one. And bishop goes to f5. It's hard to believe that black can sacrifice a pawn in the endgame. Because any any time I want can play bishop c3. And after bishop c3, pawn c3, rook c8. I don't know, at least I have uh, this, that, this. This and, and draw. I know actually there is a, even there is a no no draw after king d2. Uh, on check I play bishop d3. No, of course, uh, black cannot sacrifice. They cannot can sacrifice the pawn in the end game. So bishop d2 precise move and probably black is forced to retreat the bishop or to c6 or to or to d5. If knight c6, okay, knight takes c6. B C six Bishop D three or Bishop C four Bishop D three maybe Bishop E six okay the game is equal the game is equal really nothing to nothing to say it's Bishop Bishop Rook Rook and five against five pawns no advantage for anyone all right so yeah a sharp play but everything ends to a draw. So equal end game. Bishop d2, precise move, and Salem can decide to play the knight of d5 to keep the knights or to change the knights by playing knight c6. And after knight c6, the game will probably finish in a draw.
knight d5 keeps some tension on the board and 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 maybe some chances maybe one day black can play knight b6 knight a4 trying to attack b2 pawn but hard to believe really hard to believe that black can achieve uh, some some advantage okay let's move to another game let's move to board number board number one antonio antonio yes and black played the move f4 Black made move f4. Okay, if there is, if it's a positional chest, really, I can guess the move, and I did. Bishop takes f4, pawn takes f4, pawn takes f4, and knight d5. Knight d5. Van Hau sacrificed the pawn, but actually, maybe this even not a, is not a sacrifice. Maybe the pawn will fall soon. How to defend the pawn? Actually, maybe I can play knight e3. Knight takes f4 and knight d5, but only black can be better here. Only black can be better here. Uh huh. So, so white cannot keep the pawn. White cannot keep the pawn. That's clear. Okay, so if you cannot keep your material, you should use. Uh, other time you should use that this time to to activate your pieces and the most logical move on this position looks the move like rook e1 rook now is an open file and but and if knight takes f4 maybe there is something like rook e4 rook e1 knight e3 but on bishop on 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 rook e1 there is an intermediate move bishop h4 i don't know Rook e4 and no, I don't believe f5. Of course, f5 would be a big blunder due to this move. And take on d5, d6, queen takes. Uh, actually, no, it's not that simple. And knight to b6, yeah, because if knight d6, there is a funny move, queen e6, keeping everything under control. Uh, but knight b6 is, of course, is much stronger. Force black to take on b6, queen d5. King goes to h8 and rook e3 or rook e2. And white keeps pawn up and, of course, much better chances. All right, so, um, so rook e4. Rook e4. Okay, probably, probably after rook e1, uh, in, yeah, rook e1 here. Black can take the pawn on f4. Black can take the pawn on f4. I see any danger. So, okay, rook e4, knight d5 back, followed by c6. Okay, of course, white should change this knights. Knight e3, knight takes e3, and maybe take by rook. Take by rook. Okay, there is initiative for, for the isolated pawn. But white is no, white is any, any way better here. I don't think so. I, I would say only black because uh, the pawn on f3 and h3 doesn't look very attractive. The pawn on d4 is isolated. If the pawn would be here on f2, maybe white can hope for some better position thanks to like uh, better pieces, better pieces, like especially rook on e3, white can double, queen on b3. But with the, with the pawn on f3, I'm sorry, guys. No advantage for white. No advantage for white here. All right. All right. So this is the current position. One more time. Knight f4 takes f4 takes f4. Yeah, actually, my predictions uh, was uh, like something like wrong. I was thinking that will be like a quiet game uh, 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 and and uh, and. Uh, and a quick draw, but in fact, there is a big fight. There is a big fight, and the position is still probably uh, it, the, the the game is about equal. The game is level, but it's a big fight. It's a big fight. It's a grandmaster game. It's a full game with ideas, with uh, pawn sacrifice, with bringing the pieces. And now, of course, Anton should demonstrate, sh should show some uh, attacking skills, some initiative. 
otherwise positionally he can be like just worse because of the pawn structure all right so um, let's move to board number two board number two levan pansulaya georgian grandmaster who defeated yesterday former candidate for the world championship title nigel short legendary nigel short board number two we have the game pansula levan against daniel dubov from russia both with four and a half out of five playing so far a good quality games salem crafts if draw draw actually the position is equal and uh, okay it's really hard to 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 say so it, it is a draw it is a normal game actually from from my uh, calculation from my um, analysis uh, those are real no mistakes Tr salim was trying like playing a very original idea knight d to b8 really something that i i didn't see in a grandmaster practice such idea so the knight from g8 moved to b8 in, in a, such an early stage and later he tried to to play active a5 but but this is the logic of chess this is the this is the chess so if you don't make mistakes you cannot lose you cannot lose and white didn't make any mistake uh played accurately defending everything calculating and and, and the game is equal the position is equal and the opponents they agreed to a draw quite a logical result and um, both players after this game they have five points from six as well as uh, Vocatura Daniele no sorry Vocatura Daniele and Rapport they are four and a half out of six they made they made a draw on board number four okay so two players with five out of six and three more rounds three more rounds uh, three rounds to go Three decisive rounds. I'm trying to find some results on the lower boards. Grandmaster Sugirov is only two and a half out of five. Completely out of form, Grandmaster Sugirov. He's uh, one of the mm, top rated players with, uh, with 2677. And only, only today he won his on plus one with three and a half out of six. Wow. Even, yeah, I didn't know that. All right, so let's move to board number two. If we can move to board number two, Pansulaya Dubov. Pansulaya Dubov, because uh, the game, the position is sharp. Uh, White is attacking, is trying to attack on the queen side by playing b4 and trying to undermine the d4 pawn. And, and Black is trying to create uh, some dangerous threats on the king side, like maybe by doubling the rooks, like rook f7, rook h8. Rook f8, h5 maybe, maybe taking one on g4 at some moment. So knight can move back to e5. There is a lot of ideas. On white, of course, should should show some, should demonstrate some activities on the queen side. Otherwise, otherwise we'll just not be in time to to create some real counterplay. All right, so we have a 15 minutes delay, and this one is not the current position. This one is not the current position. This is uh, the position with 15 minutes delay, and I was expecting the move B4. B4 here, which is the most logical move, and it's in the spirit of, of Benoni defense. Also, the game... Um, Fedosev um, Sarkisian on board number five deserve attention. So it's a deep end game, as I said. Yeah, Queen E1. It was an invitation to end game, and and Gabriel Sarkisian actually it was quite forced to go to this end game. Knight D7 back. I don't know. In my opinion, Bishop D7 is the move here to play. Why to move the knight back? The knight is in a good position. A G4. Okay, bishop b7, king g2, opening the bishop. White is playing with all his points, 
pawns, uh, taking some space advantage. C4, G5, taking on G5. Wow. Okay. Interesting game, interesting round. Um, we'll go for a short break. Stay with us, and in a couple of minutes, we'll continue our live coverage from round six of Abu Dhabi Chess Festival 2018.
Abu Dhabi Master Tournament 2018 Round 6. And this is the game of the leaders. Korobo Van Hao. Well, couple of minutes before some very strange things happened here. So Van Hao sacrificed twice the pawn. So first time I fall, of, of course, I really I can understand if even this is a strong positional idea. The move f4. And after playing knight d5, knight e3, no, sorry, rook e1. After playing a rook e1, knight takes f4, rook e4, knight d5, knight e3. Really, I don't understand the move. Uh, the move c6 why to give the pawn for free why to give it was not a necessity really black can, can play any move like knight takes knight with equal position my opinion blacks play just c6 sacrifice the pawn really i don't understand and after takes takes queen takes d5 white is a clear pawn up and van hao played queen d8 queen d8 so really, he wants just to 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 defend this pawn, uh, then game with the pawn less. Actually, after queen takes d8, rook d8, probably it's easy to hold this in game for black because uh, a lot of weaknesses in white's position and d4 pawn is not a good one. I'll, I can just double the rook, rook d5, rook d8, bishop f6 or f6, king f7, and black's black is completely fine. But of course, the problem is. If white keeps the queen and white should keep the queen, like I play, I'm playing just queen to b3. I don't know, white, the black cannot attack any of my pieces. And uh, later on, I'll bring my rook to d1 or maybe 2e1. Maybe I can start push, start pushing c4, uh, sorry, e5, d5, followed by knight to c4, rook d1. Very strange decision, really very strange. So just black is a pawn down with, okay, some compensation, some chances to save the game. But this is just saving the game, no more. I mean, trying to work hard to just to save the game. And and Van Hau is very low on time, only, only 11 minutes only. This is also um, an important factor. So generally, nowadays, chess is... Uh, is a sport and time is part of the of the of the of the game and i would say if you have like double than your opponent let's say 10 minutes against uh, 20 against 10 so it's like a half of the pawn i would say okay so after queen d8 probably anton anton korbov should retreat the queen to to, to b3 following by rook to d1 or rook to e1 d5 and black, of course, can defend by bishop to f6 or bishop to d6. Maybe one day even to take on e5. Maybe Van Hau is 100% is sure that he will just save the game, save this game. But really, I don't believe it was a necessity to, to sacrifice the second pawn. To sacrifice, I mean, one more time the pawn. Uh, all right. All right. So... A really strange decision. A really strange decision after Queen D8. Yeah, Queen B3. Yes, Anton Korobov did it. Anton Korobov did it, and actually, it's even bigger time advantage. It's 27 to 11. Bishop to F6. Okay. And this game, I can really find. I can really guess all the moves. And Bishop to F6, and now White, uh, White can decide to put the rook on D1. Let's say rook to d1, defending the d4 pawn. Now black white wants to play knight g4 maybe, or maybe to advance the pawn to d5. Black will play queen d6 maybe, and knight c4. Uh, still keep white keeps big chances to convert uh, his extra pawn, and really strange decision. All right, all right. So uh, Anton Korobov is better. Anton Korobov is is better let's go to board number two board number two levan pansulaya levan pansulaya daniel dubov 
Levan Pansula, Daniel Dudon. He did, he did, he did play before. He did play before. No, he did actually play queen d2, f4, and b4. Bishop f7, b5, knight d8, a4, and this is the current position. Oh, I'm a little bit confused by black's move f4. As my chess understanding says that really, why, why to close the position on the king side? Why not to keep some tension? Why not to keep some tension? I don't know. I don't know. I would, I would, uh, I would prefer to to play maybe a5 here and and bring the rook to e8 and trying to play to to open the to open the position on the king side, not to close. And really, f4. Okay, it's a long long term idea. Black wants to bring the the knight, like playing e5, bring the knight to d8 to g5, playing h5. And leave all the white pieces, b2, b2 bishop and c2 knight without any real counterplay. Yeah, this is the idea. So black wants to play e5, bringing the knight to e6. But now white played e4, followed by bishop a3, knight b4, knight d5. Oh, the problem is still the bishop on g2. Still the bishop on g2, the poor position of the bishop on g2. But white can organize some counterplay on the queen side. And on the king side, white can keep by rook f2 playing, uh, bishop to f1. And one, one day maybe white can use the typical, typical idea of run forest. Like rook f2, king f1, king e1, king d1, and bring the king to the queen side. I don't know, of course, I don't think uh, this, is the, this is the way to play. Okay, let's play e5 here. e5. E5. Well, I would, I would say if if White will manage to sacrifice the exchange on E5, but of course this is a dream. This is a big dream. Okay, let's say Bishop A3, Rook D8, Rook E8, Knight B4, Knight C6, Knight E6. Knight to d5. Knight to d5. And black can start already plays a typical king side attack. King's typical king's Indian attack with h5. Back to board number one. Back to board number one. And white played rook to e1. No, not to d1, to e1, but okay. Uh, no big difference. The only thing, the only thing that really, mm, really I don't like is that white allows the move. White allows the move. Uh, bishop takes e5. And but maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not so important. So after rook e1, and if bishop takes e5, pawn takes e5. No, it's a clear pawn up. It's a clear pawn now. I was thinking that maybe some rooks and games, but. White's idea is to open up the position with e6, and white's rooks are too active. Now, of course, not not bishop takes e5. So black should activate the rooks and the queen. And let's say queen, yeah. This is the current position. I It's the position actually from my analysis. Wow. This is board number two, and this is the position from my analysis. Really? With okay, some slight, some slight uh, difference, some slight, uh, 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 but knight to e6, rook to a2, uh, rook to c8, let's say h5, and queen e1, and queen e1. No, sorry, I'm sorry. The knight is not on b4. The knight is on b3. The knight is on b3. How? All right. So e5. Bishop a3, rook e8. Aha. Uh -huh. Rook a2, knight e6, knight a1. Rook c8, knight to b3, and h5, queen e1. Yeah, this is the current position. 
White wants to bring the rook to e2. White stabilized the queen side. And uh, white wants to bring the rook to e2. And maybe one day, really maybe one day, to sacrifice the exchange on e5. Uh, this, is the, this is the dream. This is the dream. Uh, and what black can do here? Yeah, this is the current position. If I would say, let's try to sacrifice a piece. Okay, as a commentator, I can do, I can do everything that what I want because this is not my piece. This is not my game. So I can sacrifice everything. So knight g5, h4, and take the pawn on f3. Bishop takes and take on g4. It's a piece sacrifice for two pawns. Now black got a, a, a very um, strong pawns formation on the center on the king side. And, and this formation is ready to crush everything. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. To crush or not to crush. And bishop f6. Followed by king g7. I don't know. No, this is... And I want on knight c5 to sacrifice even a rook. Why not to dream? Why not to dream to play some fantasy chess? King to g7, followed by rook. h8, and if necessary, to play g3, take the pawn. Bringing the other pawns, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is, of course, a dream. But this will never happen in a real game, in a real life. All right, so after queen e1, after queen e1, how to continue? Uh, after h takes g4, I think that white will take with f and uh, and activate the bishop. And really, and really now, I don't believe white is uh, white is worse anymore. No, definitely not. Definitely, this is not Black's idea. And the other move is like Bishop H6, Bishop F6, normal move. Uh, keep keeping the H4 square under control. Maybe sometimes Black prepare the move King G7, uh, opening the the H file. Like this is normal move. This is normal move, but something something is like looks like not enough. And one more idea: Can Black play here? Let's say B6. And if rook a2, rook sorry e2, to play knight to to c5 now. The the, the difference is that uh, the c5 square is covered, is under control, and and no any like knight c5 ideas. And if now this time h4, I'll take on f3, bishop takes f3, h takes g4. Bishop e4, and maybe now Bishop f6. This version is definitely much better than than the previous one, and 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 White's attack is serious. Wow, e4. Wow, that's great, really great move. E4. I was thinking about positional idea. Okay, also knight g5. So e4 wow sacrificing the pawn the central pawn okay okay e4 so taking by d definitely is not good because rook takes c4 and and position is collapsing but i have some questions about about the move f takes e4 and probably black will take on g4 first hg4 and play something like bishop e5 or g5 at once no bishop e5 cementing the the the, the kings the the pawn e4 and now black wants to play king g7 rook h8 Wow, that's a great move, really, that's, that's a really fantastic idea, that's a really fantastic idea. 
and Daniel Gudubov is in a great form. Actually, he's a he's a he's a good player. He's a strong player. Yeah, and this kind of decisions like movie four make him really a great player. And, and really, I believe soon, like in a couple of years, we'll see him playing top tournaments. I mean, super GM tournaments. Uh, really, this is my prediction, and it's it's. It's obvious to me as a coach, as a, as a grandmaster. Okay, we are back to board number one. To board number one. Anton Korobov, he is a pawn up. He is a pawn up. He is a pawn up. So an F5 just played. All right, so G6, F4, Queen C7, F5. Trying to disturb the black king, trying to open up the position, and king g7 played instantly. Instantly, so black is really short on time, really short on time. And by the way, by the way, and it's not only about time. It's not only about time. I think the position is already close to, close to. Lost, maybe not lost, maybe not, not. Not yet, but really something very suspicious. Okay, knight g4, I was thinking to sacrifice the exchange. G takes f5. Knight, knight takes f6. Take on e4. No, there is no anything, yeah? Not an immediate win. All right. No, probably not. Probably not. Uh, just a couple of moves back. So King G7. King G7. Okay, if, if there is nothing concrete, White can play like move like Queen F3 here. Queen F3 followed by by Knight G4 or Rook G4. And but something looks like should be something more concrete. And what about like simple chess? Take on F6, F takes, and Knight G4. Now this allows black to play bishop to h4. Bishop to h4 and maybe it's not so simple. So one more time. King to g7. King to g7. Okay, if there is anything better queen f3 is the move. But intuition, my intuition. Okay, let's take. Take, take on f5. Knight f6, take on e4. Take on e4. Knight d5, queen d6, this is nothing. Now rook to e4, no, this is nothing. Alright, I was thinking like something like rook takes e4. And if king takes f6, queen f3 check. King g6 or g7 doesn't matter. Rook g4 check. So now king h8 is queen f6 mate. And if... And if... And if after rook g4, king f6, queen f6 mate. Checkmate. And rook takes e4 here. White sacrificed the exchange, but... It looks like... Very dangerous attack. Now maybe white white wants to play queen f3, followed by rook g4. Uh, yeah, no. It's interesting. It's interesting exchange sacrifice. I don't know. Maybe computer disagree with me. But uh, after king g7, okay, Anton is a very good tactician, very good tactical player. And probably he will find a way how to how to manage to to convert his extra pawn and uh, and initiative into victory. In my opinion, very very weak game for for Van Hau. Really weak game. Couple of his decisions are are un, un, really unexpected and totally un, un, unbelievable. I would say really hard to believe, hard to understand. They're just giving the pawn on the on like in the in the equal position. All right, 
All right, this is the this is the game. Let's move to uh, back to board number. Yeah, so board number three, four, we have draw. Yeah, board number two, board number two, Pantsulaya Dubov. Uh, Pantsulaya Dubov, because uh, this is uh, uh, Pantsulaya Dubov. The move E4, the shocking move E4, really, really fantastic one, really. I would say it's a classical, it's a classical breakthrough in the center, destroying the pawn structure. And taking by the pawn F leaves black with a strong compensator, compensation after take take bishop E5, bringing the king to G7, rook to E8, maybe G5 immediately black can play, and trying to to play against G4 pawn like slowly, slowly. I mean, ideally will be like playing the knight to F8, G6, E5, uh, on bishop to E6. If 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 pawn g4 falls, then the game is over, and the game is over. Yeah, this is really this is really fantastic decision, fantastic move. Uh, e4 here. E4. So board number two. If we ca we can see from the camera, uh, which decision White uh, White took. Yeah, e4 is really fantastic idea. It's a really fantastic idea. All right, all right. Strong play, strong play of Grandmaster Daniel Dubov from Russia. From Russia. Yeah, this is board number five. Board number five. Actually, I was following. I was following this end game. A lot of interesting things. A lot of interesting things in this end game. And this is the game. This is the position from the camera. From the camera, white is a pawn up, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, and and white can take on on just take on on uh, on c4, or white can take an intermediate move on e7. Really, I don't understand the difference. Okay, so let's let's see if uh, b takes c4, rook e2. Rook e2, because rook takes c1, rook e1, like changing everything, the end game, I think, should be lost. Should be lost. Okay, not so easy because it's not easy to make a passed pawn, but I believe, like, uh, should be lost. Like, b takes c4, and maybe rook e2 is the move. But no, rook e2 actually brings any benefits because king f3... And white cannot, black cannot take take on e2 because rook e8 check, rook takes rook and and it's winning. So really, I don't see anything better. Okay, uh, Grandmaster Fedosey is thinking about the move rook takes e7. Rook e7. Yeah, this is not the current position. We are very far from the from the position on the board. From the position on the board, yeah, and and this is not the position. Uh, all right, all right, so we have 15 minutes delay and this is not the position. Uh, there is a lot of interesting chess, there is a lot of interesting chess. Yeah, Fedosev, thank you for for uh, this uh, view from this, from the position from the camera. So I don't know what is wrong with taking, just taking the knight. I think maybe the maybe maybe the the, the bishop's end game is not winning. Maybe not winning, but I don't know. If white, let's say, after changing everything, I play the king to f5, pawn to h5, and later on play g6, because this is real. This is real, and also white can try to to trade the bishops to win the pawn's end game. I don't know. There is a lot of lot of idea, a lot of plans. Also, bringing the the king to the to the queen side might be one idea, or breaking with c5. No, there is a lot of winning chances. Really, I don't understand uh, why uh, uh, why uh, uh, Vladimir Fedosev is is thinking too much on this uh, obvious move. 
Okay, if rook takes e7, rook takes e7, bc4, then rook e2, then rook e2, and um, yeah, bc4, yeah, of course. I really, I don't understand why Vladimir wasted a lot of time. Why Vladimir wasted a lot of time. Ah, bishop e3, yeah, this is the idea, of course. Of course, uh, rooks end game is much easier to save than the bishop's end game. And then the bishop's end game. All right. Bishop e3. Can white avoid? Can white avoid the change of the bishops? Hmm. Really, I don't know. All right. So this is the current position. Black sacrificed the pawn and trying to activate his pieces. Okay, let's calculate a little bit. Rook takes e3, rook takes e3, king f2, of course, rook takes e1, king rook takes c1. So now pawns and game. Pawns and game is absolutely lost for black, even without calculation. That's that's simple. And from the other hand, if black plays rook to b8. White can play just rook to e7 and and steal black's position. I don't know. To me, this is should be lost. Of course, rooks and game, you never know. Yeah, even the, with the pawn down, you can save the game. Ah, actually, black can play here rook to c8, and if white brings the king, I can play king f8. Now, of course, I cannot the keep keep my rook to d7 because of king. E8, but I can play rook to e3, and now rook b8 is just a waste of time because I can play rook to b3. Pawns and games are lost, but if not, I'll play rook e3. Let's say rook to e8, I can play rook to a3, put the rook in the bad position, then activate the king. Now, that's this is the, the matter of very easy technique. Also, actually, black cannot activate the, the king because, you know, sometimes I can come from h3. Absolutely lost. Rook h8, king f5. And even even my cat can, can win this position. All right. All right. So this is bishop e3 move. Bishop e3 move. And... And... Piedo um, cf is to take a decision. To take a decision and to me this is obvious that he should take and play king e2 unless maybe he wants to keep the bishops let's try to keep the bishop bishop c3 bishop c3 bishop g5 i don't know why to give the pawn still white is of course better like rook e7 rook e7 h4 no but this time now rook e3 no i don't know really i don't know just just Bishop takes e3, rook takes e3, king f2 is just good enough. Maybe black sh uh, should keep the rooks. Yeah, of course, rook e4 is the move. Rook e4 is the strong move. And if h3, I can go king f8. Now I want to take on, on c4. Rook takes c4, rook takes c4, rook c1. Oh yeah, this one is not so simple. This one is not so simple. Let's go back to board number two. Board number two after a fa really fantastic move e4. Uh, white took on e4. Takes. Takes. Bishop e5. Black played g5. But no worry. Nothing. And just king g7. Just a cool move, king g7. No need to hurry, no need to take the pawn. Black wants to bring the rook to the h file. And if bishop to h3, there is always queen d8 move. Attacking the g5 pawn, now black wants to take knight g5. And if bishop takes e6, bishop takes e6, rook g2. Okay, this one maybe is not... Ah, no, I can take the exchange. I can take the exchange. So, I don't know. If not to take on e6... If not to take on e6, how white can create some... some Rook to f2. 
Okay. So now the idea is at least clear. White wants to sacrifice the exchange. Rook to f2. And if knight takes g5, probably white wants to take rook takes f4. This is the idea. This is the idea. The bishop on e5 is too strong. Really, the bishop is too strong and, 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 and white, white can sacrifice and exchange and even more for this bishop. But of course, white, black will never take this pawn. And what about rook h8? Follow it by rook h5. Doubling the rook, taking the g5 pawn. White's position is, I don't know, is just collapsing. The bishop on a3 and the knight. Ah, okay, I, at least I understand now. White wants to bring the knight to d2 to f3 and maybe the bishop to c1. Okay, move by move. Bishop to c1 first. And if rook h5, now I'll bring my knight to d2. I'll bring my knight to d2, but knight takes g5, and rook takes f4. But this time, this time, this time it's d. This is different. There's a big difference. Check, take and queen h3. It's an exchange up plus strong attack. I'm. I don't think white is in time to take the pawn d4 and to create some threats because mate on h1 is always more dangerous. Okay, let's. Let's check. Knight to f3. If check to h1, king f2. And somehow white managed to escape. Unless there is this check. Oh, sorry. There is there is rook h2 check. Mouse slip. A take on h2. Queen h2. And king. King is lost. This bishop e6. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that simple. King queen f2. One more tie. King f1 and maybe g5 first. G5. But even this one is not so simple. I would say take, take, check, takes, and king takes. And I don't know. Maybe this one is winning for black, but uh, black should prove. No, no, this is not, definitely not, definitely not. After rook f2, rook h5, knight d2. Now knight takes pawn. Ah, but actually black is not forced to take the rook. Yeah, why to take the rook? Maybe just to double, rook h8. Yes, of course, bishop e5 is too strong. Bishop e5 is too strong to exchange it for a rook. So in some positions, minor pieces, I mean, especially the bishop on e5 is much stronger, much stronger than the rook. Hmm. That's interesting, that's interesting. All black pieces are playing, are into the game. Doubling the rooks, and bishop e5, knight g5, bishop e7, f7, 2 can come to e6. Now that's that's definitely should be should be should be made should be made. Um, no, I don't know. Maybe black. I mean, the computer maybe can save the the game, but I don't believe. I don't believe the human. The human is able to. All right, all right. Maybe we can see from the camera. If uh, Levan Pantsulay on board number two, uh, uh, on we left from uh, yeah rock after rook f2, rook f2, and I'm expecting that black will play rook h8, and if bishop c1 on knight d2, on knight d2 there is always knight g5 on bishop c1 rook h5 first. So black keeps. Very good attacking chances, and really, I believe that Daniel Dubov is close to win the game, close to win a nice game. Let's go back to board number one. Board number one. Ah, this is the general view of the playing hall. And Vladimir Fedosev, this is board number one. This is board number one. Board number one. 
Anton Korobov. Did he manage to find the win? No, no immediate win. No immediate win. Queen e3. Queen e3, rook e8, rook f1, rook e6. This is the current. This is the current position. And white can... Uh, there is some tactics here, if I'm not mistaken. Yalla. Rook takes f6. Okay, king takes f6. I don't think that... And if rook takes f6, white can play knight to d7. I don't know. Probably I'm completely wrong. I completely... But okay, let's see. If I mean, my idea is queen d7, I win more than a rook. Check, check, rook is hanging this and double attack. Just a little bit, just a small demonstration. Yeah, this is the current position, rook f6, and I want to take on f6. Let's go. Take, take, and knight d7. And if queen takes, rook d7, and check, and queen e5, check. Let's demonstrate one more time how white win the game. And if black doesn't take, it's a fork. And obviously I will take one of the rook and, and next the next rook will come to e7 and black is lost. Black is lost. Okay, maybe not that easy because after rook d7 takes, takes, I can play rook to e8, rook to e8 or even rook to e7 and Queen, even queens and game is very, very difficult for black, maybe lost. So this small capo, small combination a la Capablanca, yeah? Le, la petite combinaison. Rook takes f6. Small tactics. And if king takes, okay, there is a big choice of the moves. Ah, actually knight g4 wins immediately a rook. I wanted to play queen h6 or, or, uh, or queen f4 check. But no, knight g4 wins the rook. So rook takes f6. I think this is a technical way. Technical way to, to convert, to, to change some pieces and to, to transpose the game into winning endgame. Of course, maybe there is, uh, there is other continuations here. Maybe just a move like knight to g4. Knight to g4. Maybe some tricks like bishop g5. I oh, know actually there is no place for tricks. Take, take and checkmate. King g8 lose the knight, so lose the the rook, and king to h8 lose the king. So if you go to h8 lose the king, lose the knight. No, a very pleasant choice. Yeah, there is, yeah, so knight to g4 as well is a very strong move. Or rook takes f6. Really a pleasant choice. I don't know. I don't know. In my opinion, a weak game. A weak game of of uh, Grandmaster Van Hao. And Anton Korobov actually, maybe he did. Okay, nowadays, of course, I can say that he did choose a, a correct strategy, playing something like very... Mm, very equal, I would say, not drawish, of course, but very equal, very calm, like trying to. Yeah, he did play. He actually did, he did play to knight to g4. Rook takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop g5. This is the current position. And here, I think, should be a forced win. d5, yeah? Okay, it's not the first win. White just advanced his uh, past pawn. Maybe white wants to give check on d4. Black is down to 2 minutes and 30 seconds only. Now, now everything, everything is, is, uh, is bad for black. The time, yeah. And it seems that Anton Corbo is winning. Let's go to board number 5. To board number 5, Fedosev uh, plays with Sarkisian. And actually this end game happening, the, happening. Uh, white uh, white did exchange the bishops exchange every everything
exchange everything and we have this current position which in my opinion i was thinking i was thinking that uh, no i'm not 100 percent sure how it was the the move order after bishop e3 this i uh, probably maybe white just took on f3 take rook f3 rook Rook c1, rook e2, sorry, a3. Or maybe instead of rook c1, rook a1, h4. Rook c1, rook f4. I'm trying once again to to, to guess the move, to, to put the, the position on the board. No, but it's not this one. Uh, okay, maybe we can see from the camera from the camera is much better because we have this 15 minutes delay and we are always late with the moves and from the camera we have a completely different story so please um, the position from the camera will be like much better much more important now much more important now all right so let's go to the board number two because this is really more interesting more interesting the, on board number two Pansulaya Dubov both players are very short on time with six minutes for white and eight for black and and after rook king g7 rook f2 I would, I would like to focus on board number two if we can see from the camera it will be great because uh, rook h8 knight d2 on bishop c1 we can follow the game live without 15 minutes delay yes thank you thank you very much thank you very much and and what's going on what's going on black is down a piece black is a no I know black is absolutely winning thank you because I thought the bishop is on c1 king is in very big danger and 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 rook h1 to come or rook h2 to come no way no way to escape for for Levan Pansulaya yeah soon we can stay on this position because in, yeah he resigned he did resign nice win a really fantastic game and I believe soon and maybe even more than a year we'll have a super grandmaster um, Daniel Dubov from Russia because uh, he demonstrates he shows a fantastic chess a really fantastic chess um, I don't know his level is more than 2690 I mean he's clearly top player he's, he will be a top player because he plays like very deep ideas especially this f4 made a very big impression on me bringing the knight to d8 e6 e5 and and the move e4 this classical classical prone break and the, and the one of the strongest uh, strongest square yeah so we can, we can this game really we, you can show to the to the chess players to the young generations how to play with black pieces and really okay we have a sole leader. We have a sole leader. Daniel Dubov with five and a half out of six. But, but maybe he will be uh, not alone. Not alone. Anton Korobov really very much wants to join him. And let's go back to board number one. Board number one, both opponents are in the time trouble. And, and if if Anton Korbov score, if Anton Korbov win this game, he will share for the first for, with um, with uh, Daniel Dubov. And tomorrow, of course, they will play each other. All right, all right. So let's go to board number one after d5. After d5. After d5, black should, uh, I don't know, maybe black can try to, 
to keep the queen on the deck on, on this diagonal but after king h1 i don't know queen e5 is hanging no this is definitely not the move i don't know i don't see any any defenses for black i don't see any defenses for black queen d4 is coming d6 knight f6 knight h6 h4 150,000 of ideas and that's really poor game poor game and for uh, for grandmaster for grandmaster van hao for grandmaster van hao all right so all right so probably we'll have two leaders and tomorrow they will play each other they will decide the I don't know, maybe not the first play, but the podium is that for sure. So, can we have the view from the camera from board number one, please? Because this is the position with 15 minutes delay, and probably both players are now short on time and playing very, very fast. And the position is changing. I don't know. Okay, so... Still, we don't have the... Uh, yeah, on board number seven, Grandmaster Le Kwan Glem is back to business, back to big business. He beat... He just beat uh, Grandmaster Alexander Fier from Brazil. And he is four out of six. Uh, the other games are still in progress. Cheparinov, Firuza Alizera, Amin Basam with Aryan Chopra from India, Nikhal Sarin with Mircea Pirligras from Romania. And board number six, Nayanan with Akopian. So can we see the camera from board number one, of the board number one? And we can follow live the decisive game of the round. Will Anton Korobov catch the leader or not? Yes, he did it. Yes, he did it, but it's too late. <laughs> for our for our viewers it's already the final position and black resign black did resign so anton korobov won the game i don't know it's uh, really uh, uh, i mean actually yes anton did Ko uh, korobov played not a bad game but but i would say that that van Hau lost this game not uh, why, why didn't make any special any special moves, any big efforts, I would say. Probably one, one, one moment why it was ready to make a draw or to, to play a, a, a simple position. But Black did some very, very strange thing. The move C6, really, I don't have any explanations. Really, I'm, I'm comp this is, and this is probably not the chess. Not only Grandmaster Van Hao can say that. Why? Why did he give the pawn absolutely unforced absolutely unnecessary yeah so chess is not only games chess is not only moved but this is also psychology and it's really it's about this it's a, a psychological moment and van Hao probably lost lost this uh, lost his um, his uh, feelings or his uh, i don't know his um, mm, yeah, probably feelings and, and that position because really why not to, to change to change the knights and to defend the same position the same structure but with the equal pawns really i cannot explain this is comes from psychology and not from chess all right all right so we have two leaders two leaders of the round korobov and uh, dubov anton korobov and daniel dubov one is coming from Ukraine and the other from Russia. So tomorrow we will have a derby. A derby, Russia against Ukraine. And probably Dubov will play with white pieces and Korobo with black. So two big countries, two grandmasters countries, two a competing country in chess, of course, are playing tomorrow. Uh, all right, so board number three, four are draws. Fedosev is still trying to win the end game, to win the end game, the rook's end game, and he keeps good chances to convert his extra pawn. 
but you know, we know uh, because Armenian school, they are very strong in the game and especially in defending end games. And Akopian, Sarkisian, of course, Levon Aronian, all are very good, very good technicians. So uh, I believe that there is some chances, good chances for Gabriel Sarkisian to save the game. Uh, what about the others? Cheparinov plays with uh, Firuza Alizera. Firuza Alizera, very young and talented player from uh, Iran. One of the one of the young player, young talented from a gold generation, I would say. Max Sudlu, Tabata Bay, and Firuza Alizera. Yeah. Uh, the the game the many many games are still in progress uh the time control is 90 minutes for yeah this is the game from board number five fedosev with with sarkisian sarkisian i don't know now i don't believe he, this is winning anymore so maybe we can stay on the camera Maybe we can stay on the camera and watch and follow the game directly from camera because uh, I am the, the 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 live coverage is of course 50, with 15 minutes delay. So can we stay from the camera, please, and and follow the games? It's really for me as a commentator, it's hard to to do my job because the moves are completely different. We have a different uh, positions from from uh, from the camera and. But of course, I understand uh, nowadays this is a necessity. So, or you, or you have like a metal detector, or you have a, like a, a strong anti anti cheating measures, or you just delay the the the, the live transmission. All right. So um, uh, let's let's see the camera if possible. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is the current position. And White is still trying. White is still trying to convert. But I think White lost. White lost a big part of the advantage. And this is should be draw. Of course, White keeps uh, ch better chances. Thanks to um, more advanced pawns on the king side. Uh, H6, king G6. And what? And what, and what, and what, and rook f2. Aha. King g6, rook f2, and rook c on, f5, on g5, h7, rook g4. Check. Maybe actually it's possible. So here is the moment to, to, to decide what, where to move the king. Where to move the king. Okay, king g6 looks like... Looks like very natural move. And probably this move is right. Really, I don't... I don't believe. Okay, uh, there is a different choice. Maybe on, on King G6, White is intention is to play Rook B4, but after Rook B4, I can play F6 and and destroy the pawn the pawn formation, the pawn formation on the king side. So no, the idea is on King G6 to play Rook F2. Okay, there is no time to take uh, the pawn on D5 because Rook F6 checks. So Rook C4 check. King g3 or h3 i don't know king h3 let's say king takes g5 if king takes g5 h7 rook g4 check or rook h4 no rook h4 lose to rook f5 and if rook g4 check uh rook g4 check king f2 rook h4 no doesn't i don't believe i don't find actually how how black lose immediately so king g6 uh, this is the move to play, and after rook f2, rook c4, check. All right, so we are um, back to camera, if possible, because, yeah, Dr. Amin Basim, he is still playing with Aryan Chopra from India, and he sacrificed an exchange, but uh, only white can play for a win this position. I mean, still some draw, some drawing chances for black and some winning for white. All right, let's go to the other games. Narayanan with uh, Akopian. With Akopian, Black is two pawns down. 
but some activities, some activities, actually, I don't know. Maybe rook to d4. Rook to d4 here. Rook d4, rook a2 back. I don't know. Maybe the compensation is just not enough. All right. So Chiporin of Firuza Alizera. White won a piece, but uh, black central pawns are can be strong, actually. It depends if white managed to to push the pawn h7, let's say h5 to h7, like after bishop d3, rook h8, h6, h7. But, okay, piece is a piece, of course, piece and white is better. I believe um, Cheparinov should try to win the game. Nihal Sarim Purli Grass. Nihal Sarim Purli Grass. Wow, this one is probably winning for white. I, I think this, this one game is, is just winning. Why just, uh, it's of course not so easy. Why should play something like rook f5, rook, rook b5, rook f5, trying to to activate the king. Not easy, but I think it's a good winning chances for a young, talented Nihal Sarim from India. One of the rising stars of the world. Uh, game number 11, Max Sudlo plays with Prasanna. Oof, that one is really... Mm. big battle, I would say middle game position and the, the, it's about equal it's about equal it's about equal Ahmed Adli plays on board number 12 with Arjun with Arjun okay, white is more active and maybe he can be even a, few, uh, a pawn down but still the, the position is uh, all the pieces are hanging and Everything is possible in, in, in the, in the, in the um, time trouble, in the time, in the time scramble. So really, mm, Tabata Bay, uh, the player from Iran that I mentioned before, he beat international master Sindarov from uh, Uzbekistan. All right. So mm, Nigel Shore didn't made, didn't manage to win with white pieces. International Master Akash from India. From India. Mm, Abu Dhabi Chess Club players made a draw. Sultan Al Zabi and uh, Omran Al Hassani. All right. All right. So the only game from the leading group is Fedosev from board number five. Fedosev with Sarkisian and Nayaranan with uh, Akopian. Let's stay on Fedosev with Sarkisian, board number five. Board number five. Board number five. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think, I think we can finish our live coverage from today because all the games from the leading groups uh, are already finished and we have two leaders. We have two leaders. Grandmaster Korobov, he defeated as Grandmaster Van Hao from China and Daniel Dubov, he defeated with a fantastic central break E4 Grandmaster Levan Pantsulaev from Georgia. So two leaders with five and a half out of six and tomorrow of course they will meet, meet each other. Thank you for watching us, thank you for staying with us, follow us on Instagram, on our Facebook, Facebook page and of course our live coverage here on Chess24. I am Grandmaster Viorio Rodokiesko. Current, uh, currently, I am a coach uh, here in Abu Dhabi Chess Club. Tomorrow, the round starts at 5 p.m. local time. And stay with us. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.